the snow began to fall at Martin Stadium. It brought a big cheer from the Cougar fans on the far sideline. They consider it Cougar weather and part of their advantage. We'll be on the Husky sideline in the first half, on the Cougar sideline in the second half, giving you interviews plus injury updates as the game goes along. Husky defensive tackle Dennis Brown with a torn knee ligament, talking with Husky trainer Dennis Seeley, the staff evaluating him one more time after pregame warm-ups, but they fully expect him to go in today's game. The field itself in good condition. The traction is good. There was a breeze, but it is now still. The other good part, the ink on the flip cards is waterproof. Keith? Sam Atkins, Dennis Brown playing. That'll be a big impact. It will definitely be a big impact for Washington. Cougars ranked 19th in the country, looking for their first eight-win season in 1981. Back following these words from your local station, this is Apple Cup 88. Oh, man. Keep pushing. That low-octane stuff's not going in this, baby. What? This one? They just have one with 87 octane. There's a Unical up the street, wimp. So? They're the only one with an 89 and lead and regular. So? An engine that knocks and things isn't cool. And Unical has the best gasoline and clean port fuel injectors. How's she running? Need some 89, Murph. Right, I'll fill her up. Nah, two bucks will do. Oh. Go with the spirit of 76. You watch that sunrise every morning. And Out in the Yakima Valley, the grass is greener, the water a little cleaner. The, the goudas proof is in that the cows are milk. made here rival, if not surpass, the ones from Holland. It's real creamy. At Thriftway, we pride when we see it. Thriftway, Washington's food store. On the season premiere of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Elsewhere, Troy will have her baby in about 36 hours. News of an alien pregnancy alarms the crew. Something which I can only describe as a presence entered my body. But this mysterious entity pose the deadly threats. Destroy it now. Join the crew for the season premiere of all new episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Next Saturday night at 7 on Channel 13. Live from Pullman, the 1988 Apple Cup is being brought to you by Fred Meyer. You'll find it at Freddy's. By Rainier Beer. The only beer to drink around here is Rainier. And by Pemco. We honor excellence. Keith Chipman, Sam Atkins, Todd Pickett back at Martin Stadium in Pullman. Fifth sellout in stadium history. Sam, uh, the numbers would tend to put Washington State in a favorable position, but this is the kind of game that Washington wins. It is a good game for Washington because of the fact that they are, they play their best game when they're underdogs on the road. However, offensively, the numbers favor Washington State. Quarterback position, Rosenbaugh has thrown for more yards than Kerry Conklin. The rushing game also favors Washington State. Roussard and Swinton rushing for 1,900 yards. Total offense, you got to give the credit to the Washington State offensive line. They just need 11 yards to go over 5,000 yards. On the defensive side, Washington State They've only got eight sacks for the whole season. That has got to change. And the linebackers, that advantage goes to Washington because their linebackers lead the conference in tackles. And second, secondary, Washington is the number one pass defense in the Pac-10. And time for Sam Atkins to wax philosophical. Sam, what are the keys in today's game for one team to beat the other? Well, I think for Washington, they're going to have to establish their running game to keep the Washington State offense off the field. Also, they're going to have to put pressure on Tim Rosenbaugh, force him to throw the football early. The Cougars, on the other hand, are going to have to spread the field, use a lot of motion, and force Washington to declare what the coverage will be. The defensive side, the defense is going to have to come up with some big plays, force some turnovers for them to keep in the ball game. The Washington State Cougars are a three and a half point favorite in this contest. But throw all those numbers out, as they say in cliche talk, and you can get an opportunity to see just how much it is snowing here at Martin Stadium. Jason Hansen kicking off. And it'll be Steve Jones, eight yards deep in the end zone. Washington will start first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. This place is rocking and rolling. Fifth time it has been sold out. Four of those occasions have been for University of Washington games. And Sam, we're gonna wait and see what uh, Kerry Conklin and his uh, Husky offensive teammates do 
as they come out to start this game. I would expect that they might try to open things up a bit. How about you? It's interesting that Don James elected to receive. Normally, he likes to have his choice in the second half, but he doesn't want to give Washington State the football first. First and 10, Washington from their own 20-yard line. Jenkins and Weathersby the backs. That's Aaron Pierce, the tight end in motion. Weathersby. Stop for no gain. Let's have a look at the University of Washington's offensive lineup. They start seniors across the front offensively with the exception of Byrne Brostek, Kelly John Lewis, a redshirt senior starting as well, and Mark Kilpack, the sophomore at tight end. Conklin, Jenkins, Weathersby, Brian Slater, who had such a big game here in 86 at flanker, and Scott Fitzgerald, the senior at tight end, or at uh, split end. Second and 10. Conklin will throw. It's complete, and that is Brian Slater. A seven-yard gain. It'll be third and three. Cougars defensively. Randy Gray, Tolo Palele getting his first start. Tony Savage and Ivan Cook, the other senior. Metcalf, Grayson O'Neill at the linebacker spot. Landrum, Lee, Holmes, and Vernon Todd, all seniors in the defensive secondary third and they'll call it four the Huskies must get to the 30 yard line to pick up a first down he'll pass Aaron Jenkins incomplete and the Huskies three and out in their first series Sam and credit that incompletion to Tony Savage who was bearing down on Kerry Conklin forced him to throw that ball with a little more heat than he wanted to and Aaron Jenkins could not come down with the football. And so Eric Canton will come on to punt for the University of Washington. Victor Wood is deep to receive for Washington State. Wood with a 16, or rather a 5.2 yard per return average hasn't been a real threat. High kick, but short. Horrible kick if you're Don James. Took a huge Cougar bounce, and Washington State will start from their own 36-yard line. Holy cow, that's not the way you want to begin a game. Definitely not, and Don James was concerned about that yesterday in practice. He says, come on, guys, hit that football, drive it out of the stadium. However, Canton didn't get all of that one. Washington State starts with great field position, and they have scored in four ball games on their first drive, their very first possession, and they could have scored in their last two ball games, but they have missed field goals. So they move the ball, they come out smoking offensively. Washington State, first and 10 from the Husky 36 yard line after a punt of eight yards. Richie Swinton to the 30 yard line. Ken Kuyper, Mahalchek, Fakima, Utley, Dyko, all seniors up front for the uh, Washington State Cougars. Rosenbaugh, Swinton, Stallworth, Wood, and Wimberly. The ball carrier was Broussard in the previous play. He gained a six. It is second and four. Here is Broussard for a first down. And they have gained 11 yards. Total offense for Washington State is now 5,000 yards in one season. Up front for the Huskies, Richardson Murray, who had a fabulous game against Cal a week ago. Harrison, Fraley, Andrews, and Collins are the backers. Lilo Lang, Daryl Hall, Eugene Burkhalter, and Tony Zachary are on the defensive backfield. Here is Tim Rosenbaugh looking at first and 10 from the Husky 25. Swinton is to the 20-yard line. A gain of five for Washington State. Dory Murray made the stop, the senior from Bellevue. And Rich Swinton, who has carried so wonderfully in the absence of Steve Broussard, has done a tremendous job as his backup. Swinton is the setback. Second and five. Rosenbaugh will pass. Incomplete. Ricky Andrews was in the vicinity. 
I'll tell you what, if I see Ricky Andrews coming my way, I'm liable to get out too. <laughs> Richie Swinton, he he knew he was hitting trouble because he could feel Ricky Andrews bearing down. Tim turned and went to Richie Swinton fairly quickly. He didn't really look downfield. It wasn't much of a threat, and that's why Ricky closed so quickly. Cougars with a better than 50% average on third down situations. It is third and five right now. Ball rests on the University of Washington 20-yard line. Rosenbaum. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Elmer Thomas. And that ball flashed by Tony Zachary, and I think it distracted Elmer Thomas. That ball looked like it hit him right in the face mask. Tim Rosenbaugh audibilizing at the line of scrimmage and then reads the seam, comes and throws a strike, just gets it over the outstretched arms of Tony Zachary, and it hits Elmer Thomas right there in the face mask. Boom, and bounces off. He didn't have a chance to get it into his hands. Jason Hansen on to attempt a 37-yard field goal. He has a long of 52 this year. The kick is up, and the Cougars lead 3-0. Washington State University has built a 3-0 lead, 11.53 to play. First quarter, coming back to Martin Stadium in just a moment. Pleased to join us wherever you might be in the Pacific Northwest. William Doctor is deep to receive for the University of Washington, as well as Steve Jones. Hansen kicks off, it'll be Doctor from his one. Out to the 21-yard line. Met there by Jay Langwin. And the Huskies will start first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. So let's see what Washington does with their second opportunity to hold the football, Sam. There were years when we were favored by four touchdowns, won the game ho-hum. But these days, well, those days, that is, are over, aren't they? They definitely are, and he said this game is almost bigger than USC-UCLA. First and 10, Washington from their own 21. Jenkins is the lone setback. They give to Jenkins. He's wrapped up by Dan Grayson after a gain of three yards. And Aaron Jenkins started out the year like a house of fire. He was averaging 93 yards a ball game in the first five games. In the second five games, he has averaged a mere 26 yards a game. The rushing game for Washington has really fallen on hard times. Jenkins and Weathersby in the backfield this time. The snow continues to fall. Second and seven from the 24 of Washington State. Fitzgerald in motion. It's Weathersby. Met by a host of Cougars. The first one there was Dan Grayson, the redshirt junior from Woodland, Washington. A gain of two, and the Cougar fans like it. The Washington State defense is swarming to the football, playing very aggressive. There's no push on the offensive line on Washington's part, and that's why Aaron Jenkins and Vince Weathersby are having a little bit of trouble finding running room. Third and five. Conklin will step up now. Weathersby at the wing. Jenkins the lone back. He'll pass on third down. Weathersby. Vernon Todd. That was a great play of position football by Vernon Todd. He knew he had inside help. He cooked away the outside from Vince Weathersby. Kerry Conklin looking downfield, quickly turns out, drops the ball off to Vince Weathersby. He sees he has Bobby O'Neill on the inside, so Vernon Todd cuts away the sideline, doesn't allow Vince to get on the outside. It's good heads up football by Vernon Todd. Loss of four creates a third and nine situation. Channing Wiles is on to punt. Victor Wood deep to receive. Another relatively short kick for the Huskies, and the Cougars will start with very good field position once again. 
9.30 left to play. First quarter, Washington State leading their cross-state rival by a field goal. Back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. One of the biggest drawbacks in today's performance is the sluggishness caused by dirty intake systems. So we developed Chevron Supreme, the high-octane gasoline with Tecrolene. No additive cleans entire intake systems better. Now you'll be free to move ahead without any drawbacks. Chevron, we fuel your freedom. All airplanes are created equal, built by the same people. But after they're built, something happens. People don't think of all airlines in the same way. Just look at all the business flyers that have flown with us over the years. Maybe it's that we fly to more business centers. Or maybe it's how we fly to more business centers. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. It's been a gut-wrenching week for Dennis Erickson, Sam. Boy. That was back in May when he made that quote. And then this week at the Spokane Cougar Rally, he said, every morning when you put your feet on, when you get up in the morning, say, beat the Huskies. People jumping in the neutral zone. The Cougars' first and 10 opportunity. It'll look as if, uh, from preliminary indications, it'll be a procedure call against Washington State. And the Cougars are the most penalized team in the Pac-10 conference this year. Here's Larry Thompson, today's referee. Dead ball, false start against the offense. Still first down. It was the whole right side of the Washington State offensive line. You see Mike Utley jumping a little early, causing Chris Dyko to follow his lead. So first and 15, here's Broussard. Wrapped up after a three-yard gain. <laughs> Wonder how much antifreeze those guys have there, Keith, just to stay a little warm. <laughs> Chico Fraley made the stop. Dennis Brown remains on the sideline for Washington. It's a second and 12 situation. Rosenbaugh under center. The draw to Broussard. He's to midfield and into Husky territory. And Washington State electing to keep the football on the ground because Washington defense is last in the Pac-10 against the rush, allowing 191 yards of ball game. And you see, that's just a simple draw play where Broussard runs to daylight. He has to find a hole. Out of Los Angeles, California. First, or rather third and four. Just across midfield. Broussard in motion, no backs. Quick. Rosenbaugh, the tight end, Doug Wilson, fumble, and Washington has the football. Recovered by Brett Collins. Brett Collins. Wilson caught the pass, was hit, and Brett Collins recovered the fumble for the University of Washington. And a great read by Tim Rosenbaugh because Washington didn't widen with Broussard motion, and then finally at the last minute, they decide to go out there, and Tim just goes opposite, but then Wellsant gives up the football. Daryl Hall forced the fumble, and Don James' defense has held Washington State. So Huskies take over, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Kilpack to the right side. Jenkins, the lone back, and they'll pass. Complete to Brian Slater, and he's into Washington State territory. An 18-yard passing gain from Conklin to Slater. And Washington shifting the tight end before the snap, which forced Artie Holmes to play strong safety rather than free safety, and Kerry Conklin was able to look him off and then complete the pass to Brian Slater in front of Sean Landrum. Slater, the senior from Lake Stevens, playing in his final game for the purple and gold. Jenkins with room. Down to the 35-yard line of Washington State. Who says that running game doesn't work? Another Husky first down. They're coming with just a simple, quick dive. 
the quick hitting plays, not the slow developing running game. They're going to have to attack and try to break that initial front seven and get into the Cougar secondary if they want to have a successful rushing game today. With Slater's catch, he's moved up to eighth on the University of Washington career reception list. All time. Jenkins on first down. Going outside this time and east to the Cougar 24-yard line. An 11-yard gain, and the Huskies are moving the ball in much the same fashion that Washington State has this year, and that's been on the ground. And Washington State collapses. Aaron Jenkins just simply bounces to the outside. Great block by Mark Kilpack on, on Maury Metcalf, and Sean Landrum is the only one that can make a tackle on Aaron Jenkins. Sam, I can't remember when Washington has run three plays, which resulted in consecutive first downs. First and 10 from the Cougar 24. Jenkins running hard. He's to the Cougar. Six down, make that the 14 yard line. Make that four plays in a row with first down. They're just gonna load up on that man right there. Say, how many times do you want the football? How long can you last? And Aaron Jenkins is now moved into 10th place on the Husky career all-time rushing list, passing Ron Jackson. And this is not a good sign. Kelly John Lewis hobbling off with the assistance of trainer Dennis Seeley. And Kelly John played an outstanding ball game last week versus California. Probably the best game of his career. We'll have a report from Todd Tickett on his status shortly. Huskies knocking on the door. First and 10 from the Cougar 14. Conklin to the air. Incomplete. They were looking for Aaron Pierce, who's perhaps the most sure-handed tight end that they have. Here's Todd Pickett. Player now team physician, Dr. Steve Bramwell. What do you remember most about your Apple Cup experiences? Well, it was always a uh, hot rivalry in the point that uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, nasty things said about each other. Uh, uh, so it's always like this. The weather's always been bad. I don't think I've ever seen a good weather day. So it's uh, one of those things that's just unique about the whole season. And uh, I can't say we were always up for them as much as they were for us. But, uh, you know, it was always a memorable day. I know you've got a player to look at. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Dr. Bramwell. Vince Weathersby, touchdown, Washington. How about that, Sam? The University of Washington with a wonderful drive. And that was Washington's best running play. All of a sudden, in the latter part of the year, the best running play they have in their repertoire is the option. Kerry Conklin, they have not been able to get out on the flank. The only way they have been able to is run the option. He fakes inside to Aaron Jenkins, forces Bobby O'Neill to make him pitch, but yet there's no support from Sean Landrum or Artie Holmes coming from the inside. John McCallum on to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Kerry Conklin. It is good, and the Washington Huskies have fashioned a 7-3 lead over the Washington State Cougars with 6.34 to play first quarter. to last. Pound for pound, nothing works like a Husky. The Husqvarna Chainsaw, they call it Husky. Raw power and lightweight make it the professional's choice. It won't let you down. Nothing works like a Husky. See your Northwest Husqvarna dealer today. See this chisel? My dad bought me this chisel the fall I turned 13 been like a friend. About time my son and I dropped by Fred Meyer. To do something right, do it yourself. To do it yourself, get exactly what you need. My stain is Monterey Gray by Olympic. You can't find it just any old place. But I found it. The Washington Huskies capitalize on a Cougar turnover and march 65 yards to the end zone. Here's the play that put them at pay dirt. Excellent play selection by Gary Pinkle, the offensive coordinator. They set that up by hitting Aaron Jenkins in the middle, in the middle, and then got that Cougar defense to collapse, and then that shortened the corner for Vince Weathersby to go in untouched. Washington State will receive now 
The kick from McCallum. Victor Wood coming up. Takes a high bounce. It'll be taken by Moton. Fumble. And Washington has the football. The Huskies recover, and they're knocking on the door. Chris Moton. The ball bounced high. And now there's some question about whether or not Washington recovered the football. I'll tell you what, there are all kinds of white jerseys all over that thing. And I can't understand how they couldn't recover that ball. <laughs> My goodness. Well, Chris Moton came out, but the ball hit the ground. The mistake is Victor does, can't get up there to catch football. It's a live football. Chris Moton goes up to get the ball at its highest point and then can't control the football. It goes between his legs, and then he finally is able at the bottom of the pile to pull the football away. What's Moton doing jumping up for that ball anyway? Because that ball, if it, Washington State, I mean, Washington was bearing down on coverage. If Washington gets that football, that's just like an onside kick. So they get the ball right there. And because of the fact that the ball hit the ground, that allowed the penetration on the kickoff cover team to get down. They were right there, almost recovered. Well, they've given the ball to Washington State, and Don James cannot believe it. And you see right there, that's how close the coverage is, right? So he said, hey, i got to get that football because Victor's not coming up to get the football. And Moton recovered the fumble. Boy, Dennis Erickson, he had enough stress coming in this week. Think what he's feeling now. Trailing 7-3. Cougars start first and 10 from their own 16-yard line. Rosenbaugh will go to the air. <laughs> Intended for Stallworth and just off of his fingertips. Just barely out of his reach. That ball was drifting just a little bit, and that's why Vin, uh, Tim just barely couldn't quite adjust. Good throw by Rosenbaugh, but not quite at the angle. Sam, the weather, the snow, who does that affect more offensively? Well, I think it affects Washington State a little bit more because their offense is so much more wide open, and they need a fast track, and this track has slowed down just a little bit. There's Fumble! Fumble. Brett Collins has recovered. Washington now has the football. And that's the second fumble recovery today for that's Brett right. Collins. Dave Fakama is slow to get up for Washington State, and the Husky sideline feels another seven points. Now we've got a little brouhaha going on. Cougar Bench is coming out. Tony Zachary and Victor Wood appear to be going at it, and isn't that odd? Old high school teammates. That's right, there's a lot of jawing going on in the bragging rights. The ball just simply comes out, Bruiser's coming in, and the ball, because of the cold weather, as he goes to tuck that ball away, it just simply falls out the bottom, and there's no way that they could, Rod Olson didn't even know the ball had come out, and Brett Collins ends up with the football. And so Washington will start first and 10, from the Husky 16-yard line, and Dennis Erickson's team turning the ball over somewhat uncustomarily this, this year, and uh, Washington's defense has to be credited. I'm sure they're forcing a lot of that. Jenkins and Weathersby in the eye. Conklin, play action. Slater, penalty flag. Vernon Todd, and that is the third time in the last two weeks that Brian Slater has drawn a pass interference penalty. Right down this, I love this kind of play selection where you go for the throat right after a big turnover, go to the end zone, make him think about it. Vernon Todd makes a little bit of contact before the ball arrives. The official felt like that was a very catchable football, even though it's a little bit behind Brian. If Vernon hadn't hit him, I don't think Brian would have caught this football. As good a player as Brian Slater is, I don't know. That's a tough call for Washington State fans, but Huskies will take advantage of that. They'll march it all the way down to the two-yard line, and that's normally a gimme. Pass interference against the defense. First down. First and goal. They'll put it on the two of Washington State. And the Huskies are on the verge of building a 10-point lead. The power formation, Jenkins, is in for the touchdown. Okay. Who would have dreamed the way Washington's offense had been playing the past few weeks that they could produce 13 points in such a hurry? 
Don James came into this ball game saying we want to establish that run. We've got to get the running game going. The running game is producing for him. Two plays on that scoring drive, the pass interference and the uh, power sweep to Aaron Jenkins who gets hit by Danny Grayson and Artie Holmes but still manages to get into the end zone. Aaron Jenkins with a two-yard touchdown run. McCallum adds the extra point, and the University of Washington has turned two Cougar fumbles into 14 points. We're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. When you enjoy a tall, cool, crisp hams, it's almost like being there. From the land of sky blue waters, from the land of pines, lofty balsams, comes the beer refreshing. For a limited time, Ham's, Ham's Light, and Ham's Draft has a special money-back offer. See your local store or newspaper for details. Breakfast. If a restaurant gave you the kind of service you get on many airlines, you'd never go back. Baby apple. I've got a baby cheese. I don't like breakfast. I'd, I'd like a spoon. Like if I did like breakfast, I wouldn't like this breakfast. I've got coffee. I'd like a spoon. Yes, I don't think the hearty breakfast agrees with my husband. Maybe he'd prefer our eye opener breakfast. Oh, hi. I'd like a spoon. On the last airlines, even though the fares we charge are just as low as anyone's, the fare we serve is always a cut above. Washington State took a 3-0 lead. The Huskies have come back and turned two tur Cougar turnovers into 14 points. And that was the nemesis for Washington State last year. Offensive turnovers led to 65 points by the opponent last year. They've avoided that mistake up until now. John McCallum has been kept busy in this first quarter. Victor Wood deep to receive along with Ed Tingstead, the senior out of Bethel High School in Spanaway. Victor Wood from his own 12-yard line. He's out to the 24, and you can just sense how tough they're hitting out there today. Big Mo is over on the Husky sideline, but also Washington State is 10th in the Pac-10 in kickoff returns. With that touchdown run by Aaron Jenkins, he is now 8th in the Husky career rushing, just surpassing Rick Finney. In case you haven't heard, USC is going to the Rose Bowl. This is Broussard. He won't go down until he's wrapped up and dropped by Chico Fraley. He's to the 40, actually 39-yard line for a gain of 14 and a Cougar first down. And Steve Broussard in that counter sweep where you see Ken Kuyper, Jim Mahalchek come around, open the hole. Ricky Andrews can't make the tackle. Chico Fraley has to come from the other side of the field to bring him down. Looks like a face mask there. Steve it's Broussard, down. Cougars leading rusher this year. And the leading rusher in the conference. Lots of time for Rosenbaum. He's to the 40 for a gain of one. Dory Murray was there. Dennis Brown as well. Dennis Brown will be a big factor in this game if he gets rolling. And Washington, their front four, were just kind of playing passive and not trying to get up the field, trying to keep Tim Rosenbaugh in that pocket. Dory Murray had a career day last week versus Cal. 20 tackles. Tim Rosenbaugh having a career year for Washington State on second and nine. Broussard. Has the first down at midfield. And there you see that sprained ankle come into play. Tim Rosenbaugh, or excuse me, Steve Broussard, was trying to cut up the field, but that's a bad right ankle. He's only running at about 80% right now. Again, it's that counter sweep where the quick guard, quick tackle, pull around. Ken Kuyper's looking for somebody to block. There you see he gets tripped up just a little bit, but he knows he can't stay in bounds because he can't plant on that right ankle. Richie Swinton, another Cougar first down, a gain of 14. Great camera work on that one. That's what it looks like to the Husky defense. The end zone shot, you saw the hole open up right before your eyes. Broussard has seven carries for 46 yards. Swinton, a couple of carries for 19. And Richie Swinton has rushed 
for 100 yards in the last four ball games. Last four games, he's rushed for 540 yards. First and 10 from the Husky 36. Rosenbaugh complete. Another first down. And that is Michael Wimberley. And Michael Wimberley coming down. That's only his seventh catch of the year. But the Washington wide receiver, Washington State wide receivers are averaging 15.5 yards per reception. Well, I tell you what, it doesn't take them long to move down the field. Broussard. There's a nice play by Marty Harrison. The redshirt junior from Bellevue wrapped him up and brought him down. Here's Todd Pickett on the Husky sideline. Keep a quick injury update on offensive guard Kelly John Lewis. A sprained ankle. He will not play in the rest of the first half. They will evaluate him further at halftime and see if he'll be able to go the rest of the game. Back upstairs. Thank you, Todd. Todd from our affiliate KAYU TV in Spokane. And we're pleased you've joined us for Apple Cup 88 live from Pullman. Wherever you might be enjoying from the Pacific Northwest tonight. Second and ten. Rosenbaugh with all kinds of time. Now he'll run. They lost contain. Rosenbaugh inside the ten. And this place is erupting. And we have a great ball game on our hand. What tremendous presence of mind. Tim Rosenbaugh standing strong in the pocket. Almost running this play like a quarterback draw. Watch him just stand there, bounce, bounce, wait for the rush to get upfield, and then shoot through that seam and turn down the field, waiting for a block to get by Tony Zachary. And then Tony just gets enough of him to trip him up. 17-yard gain. First and goal from the eight. Trips right. Here's Broussard inside the five to the three-yard line. Broussard appears to have injured himself. A four-yard gain. That was one of those high-low shots where he got drilled in the back. He's having a little bit of trouble getting up. Let's have a look again. Watch Broussard. Simple power play. Ken Kuyper sealing off the outside. Lilo Lang forces him inside. And then Eugene Burkhalter drills him from the back. Boy, can Eugene Burkhalter play this game or what? Well, he is probably one of the, he, Don James has said he will probably be the best free safety to ever attend Washington. He's been playing free safety since he was seven years old, so he's a natural. The guy is always around the football. He's just one of those instinctive ball players. And you don't coach him, you just help him along. Second and goal from the four. 3-11 to play first period. Swinton, outside, touchdown, Cougars. We might be looking at a 70 to 68 game by the time this track meet ends. <laughs> Richie Swinton running that counter sweep. Quick guard, quick tackle, seal around. Chico Fraley gets blocked just enough so that he can't turn out and knock Richie Swinton out of bounds. Richie gets in for a touchdown. From Canoga Park, California, the I home of it. Sam Atkins. They spelled Canoga wrong. It's C-A-N-O-G-A. -A. Well, you're the only <laughs> one that knew that. <laughs> The snap is fumbled. Whoa. Worley on the run. He's not in. Oh. And so the conversion fails. Big play. It was Rob Worley, or actually Rob Myers holding, and he did not get in. Boy, barely he did not get in. He was knocked out just before the ball broke the plane. He went out of bounds. He was sprinting for the corner. That's the first bad exchange that Washington State has had this year from the standpoint of a point after touchdown attempt. You see, they just simply dropped the football, so he takes off for the end zone, and right at the corner, Art Malone knocks him off. The ball never crossed the plane of the goal line, so it is not a good conversion. And so the Cougars fail on their conversion, and it's a 14-9 ball game with 3.05 to play. Rob Myers, the putter, is the holder on point after touchdown attempt. And that's the way you don't want to get your face on television, I suspect. <laughs> and 
the Husky Rally Squad is here, along with the University of Washington Marching Band. About 3,700 tickets sold through the University of Washington. And we see a lot of purple and gold scattered throughout the area, so I'm sure there were some tickets purchased through Washington State's ticket office as well. Jason Hansen to kick off. Jones and Doctor deep to receive for the University of Washington. Doctor will bring it out. William Doctor out to the 33-yard line. And that's one of the finest returns William Doctor has had this year, a 34-yard effort, taking it two yards deep in his own end zone. And Stevie Jones was running back to tell him to stay in the end zone, so he lost the blocker, but he just simply made it on his own. And now he's running off with him saying, good job, good job. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you to do. I just didn't think you were going to be able to hear me. And so Washington takes advantage of William Doctor's expertise, the freshman from El Paso, Texas. They have good field position to start this drive. First and 10 from their own 32. Three minutes to play, first quarter. Conklin upstairs, looking for Brian Slater. Oh, nearly picked off. That is Vernon, oh, check that, that's Sean Landrum. But Brian Slater was open, Sam. He had Landrum beat by a couple of steps. Just Kerry Conklin didn't put enough air under that football, which allowed Sean Landrum, who was running with Brian Slater, stride for stride. The ball's on pretty much a line, which Landrum comes in, cuts the ball off so that Brian Slater can't get it. Washington, Wishes he could have that one back. Oh, and they've opened up the offense a bit, too. The running game allows them to do that. Second and 10 now from the 32. Conklin is 3 of 5, passing for 19 yards. Jenkins and Weathersby the backs. It's Weathersby. Out to the 38-yard line. A gain of six on the play. It'll be third and four. And let's visit with Todd Pickett, who's roaming the Husky sideline. Keith, to go back to the point after touchdown play, Myers, simply like a shortstop, took his eyes off the ball. He was ready to set it down on the cheek, took his eyes off it. That's why he missed the snap. Back upstairs. Cardinal sin for a placeholder, a place kick holder. It's loud now on third and four. Cougar fans on their feet. Conklin will pass. To the 40-yard line, he's shy of the first down. Conklin to the 40, he ran about 10 yards to gain two. It'll be fourth and two. And Washington State maintaining their leverage, not allowing Kerry to find an open receiver. They see that Kerry's already made up his mind. Danny Grayson runs him down from his middle linebacker position. Kerry's trying to buy time to get outside on the pocket. It's kind of an option run pass. Kerry tucks it down, but can't make it. Channing Wiles is on to punt. His last, a 33-yard effort. Eric Canton had an eight-yard punt early, and we haven't seen him since. Victor Wood. Ooh. We'll let this one bounce. Takes a Husky roll inside the 15. Down to the 11-yard line. And that was a very good punt by Channing Wiles, kicking away from Victor Wood. Washington State might have to go ahead and put, go with two safeties so that they can't kick away from him because every time that ball hits the ground, it costs you about 15 yards in field position because it usually takes off and gets a roll just like that. Huskies with a five-point lead, a 50-yard punt by Channing Wiles. The Cougars will start first and 10 from their own 10-yard line. Rosenbaum will throw, incomplete. The intended receiver was Doug Wellsant, the tight end, and Rosenbaum ended up on his keister. And that's why the boos are roaring out of the student section here at Martin Stadium. Washington State going into this ball game had 50 drives of 50 yards or more, and they have scored on 45 of them in 1988. So this field position doesn't bother them. They are five for five in drives of 90 yards or more. When you have the nation's leading passer, a lot doesn't scare you. On second and 10, no game. Rich Swinton, the ball carrier, with one minute remaining in the first period. Bob Willig, the senior from Santa Fe Springs, California, with the tackle. Doing a little Aloha dance there in the end zone. 
it stopped snowing, Sam. That it has, and that surface kind of, uh, it doesn't get real slippery when it's wet. Very good artificial surface. Matter of fact, Don James said this surface isn't as bad, perhaps, as Oregon's because it's more slippery in inclement weather. On third and ten. Intercepted. Lilo Lang, touchdown, Washington. How about that? A 17-yard interception return at all phases. Special teams, offense and defense are contributing to Washington's lead. Right now, it's a total team effort. Tim Rosenbaugh simply staring down the receiver. Lilo Lang reading his eyes. You see Tim looking down the middle. There he goes, staring him all the way. And Lilo Lang running stride for stride with Victor Wood has tremendous position. Actually, I think Tim a, thought that he could get the ball in there on the strength of his arm. Actually, a 20-yard interception return. McCallum uh, connects on the extra point, and with 29 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Washington Huskies have built a 21-9 lead over Dennis Erickson's Washington State Cougars. And this, I guess, is what makes you take on that stress, Sam. That's exactly right. Right now, what he's saying is, okay, what can I get do to get my ball club to settle down, get back in this ball game? Because Tim Rosenbaugh is going to have to maintain him his composure and direct that offense. He can't turn into a hothead like he did last year in the ball game and then end up letting it get out of hand. Lilo Lang, there's a shot of him. Probably the most consistent defensive back this year for wa the Washington secondary. And he was a quarterback when he came to the University of Washington. You can see Ivory Randall trying to get those Husky fans who are located in the end zone fired up. USC going to the Rose Bowl. They defeated UCLA 31-22 today and will meet Michigan on January 2nd in Pasadena. The Wolverines beat Ohio State. John Cooper's team 34-31 this afternoon. That's There's a comeback John by John Cooper's team, though. They were down 20 to nothing at halftime. That may have saved, well, maybe his house anyway. <laughs> Not sure about his job just yet. Tingstead back with Victor Wood. It's Wood from the two. Out to the 20-yard line. Actually, they'll spot it shy of the 20, so they'll call it the 19 with 24 seconds to play first quarter. Cougars not used to being behind. They have come from behind on one other occasion, though, this year, in a game which catapulted them basically into the Aloha Bowl, and that was the Washington State visiting UCLA fiasco, if you will, when the Cougars came from 27-3 to down to beat the Bruins and knock them out of that number one ranking. Broussard across the 25, out to the 27-yard line for a gain of eight. Dave Fakuma is down on the ground. He's playing with a very bad knee. His cruciate is gone, and he and Paul Wolf have both traded knee injuries this year. He just decided, hey, I'm not going to, you know, it's this late in the year, I'll have surgery after the season. So he's playing with that brace on his knee. Very courageous effort. Paul Wolf is into the lineup now. Rosenbach, two of seven for 26 yards passing. Broussard, very near the first down. Chico Fraley in to make the stop, and the first quarter has come to an end. The Washington Huskies have built a 21-9 lead. Apple Cup 88. We're back following these words from your local stations. This is Apple Cup 88. The car on the right is the Ford Tempo. The car on the left is the Honda Accord. With cash back, Tempo is almost $1,500 less than Accord. Yet the Tempo has a bigger engine and more torque than Accord. Special Northwest trim. And one more option the Accord doesn't have. All-wheel drive. Test drive the all-wheel drive Tempo today. Buy this month and we'll give you your choice. Ski rack or bike rack. Now, at your Northwest Ford dealers. Next, on A Current Affair. 
Well, the teacher at that time said, we, you know, we're going to share our feelings. And I got up and said, I think this class sucks, and I'm going home. And I walked home. And that was a time when women were supposed to be good girls. I have no intention of being a good girl. A Current Affair, weeknights at 6.30 on Channel 13. What could drive a man to execute his best friend? Find out the secret police believe drove this California contractor to murder. Sunday night at 8. Apple Cup 88, the Washington Huskies versus the Washington State Cougars is being brought to you by your Toyota dealer. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? By your Northwest Husqvarna dealer, nothing runs like a Husky. And by Puget Sound Bank, the hometown bank with over 80 branches in hometowns all around the Sound. Snow beginning to fall once again here in the Palouse. Martin Stadium, we are live. Apple Cup 88, the 81st meeting between the University of Washington and Washington State Cougars. It has not been a pleasant first half for this young man, Tim Rosenbaugh, the redshirt junior out of Pullman High School by way of Helena, Montana. Also Mount Vernon. spent some time early in his life in Mount Vernon, Washington. Here's Broussard. Fumble. Washington recovers the fumble. And so the Huskies have forced a third Cougar fumble. Dennis Brown, the big guy, along with Ricky Andrews, who forced it. Ricky Andrews said earlier this week, they're going to my bowl game. They're going to my home. And I'd like them to go there with a sour taste in their mouth. I will not make it easy for them. But what that's going to do is force Dennis Erickson out of his game plan. He's going to have to start going to the air, get back in this ball game. The Huskies with the football first and 10 from the Cougar 27. Jenkins inside the 25. A penalty flag is down. And it appears there will be an illegal motion call against the Huskies of Washington. Yeah. The illegal motion was on Aaron Jenkins, who was anticipating the snap count and kind of got a rolling start. I thought he was going to get away with it because the official threw the flag so late, I figured he was just going to let it go. But he ended up getting the flag out of his pocket. It was frozen in his pocket. He had to yank twice to get it out. I tell you what, Washington plays this well offensively at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Don James liable to schedule every game at <laughs> night next year, isn't he? First and 15. Boise State trialing Idaho 26-20. That's a final. Idaho beats Boise State 26-20 today. A matchup between two former Husky assistants. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. They called that the biggest game in Big Sky history. First and 15. The ball back to the 32. Conklin upstairs. Incomplete. Mark Kilpack, the intended receiver. Kilpack earned the starting job after Bill Ames went down, and the sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon, just couldn't find a handle. Kilpack was wide open. Washington State had seven guys around the line of scrimmage. Kilpack escaped the line of scrimmage untouched. He was kind of surprised when Bill Ames went down. He ends up with the job. He visits Bill Ames at the hospital. Bill says, you can have the job until I get back. Ames, of course, grew up in Spokane and went to Washington. Second and 15. Play action. Conklin going short. It's Weathersby. He's inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Vince Weathersby wants to have a good one on his final hurrah. Washington's offense played so well in the second half against Cal last week, scoring 27 unanswered points, or actually 24 unanswered points, to win 28-27. And they outgained Cal 286 yards to 95 yards in that second half. And Washington has played very good football in the second half all year. Third and nine from the 26. Play action once again. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Scott Fitzgerald. And Artie Holmes was there with him. Scott Fitzgerald was recruited by Dennis Erickson to play at Idaho, elected instead to attend the University of Washington. Terry Conklin just simply throwing the football behind him. 
Hardy Holmes sees Fitzgerald coming to the inside, sees Carey gunning for him, but you see how far the football is behind him. A 43-yard field goal attempt from John McCallum. Plenty of distance, but wide to the right. So Washington can't capitalize on that turnover opportunity. The Huskies have forced three fumbles, and they've built a 21-9 lead over their cross-state rivals live from Martin Stadium in Pullman. We're pleased you've joined us for the 88 Apple Cup. You can get your salmon day down at the marketplace with the Northwest finest seafood on display. We might be kind of loud when we're jostling with the crowd, but they wouldn't have it any other way. Hey, hey, hey. People that we meet, the people on the street, make us might be glad we were up here. And when the closing comes around, I slam that shutter down, and I'm about to do the same thing with the This is the 81st playing of the Apple Cup game. The Washington State Apple Commission began sponsoring this event in 1962. So officially, this is the 27th Apple Cup. John McCallum attempted a 43-yard field goal just moments ago, but Sam, it was a bit wide to the right. Tim Rosenbaugh leads the Cougars, who start first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Rosenbaugh will pass. Tim Stallworth into Husky territory to the 33-yard line and a penalty flag on top of it. That may have been a face mask. And Washington State's offense, still volatile, is on the move. One thing a about that offense, yard it's, passing game. it's a quick strike offense. They go with a play action pass, faking to Richie Swinton, holding the linebackers, and then Tim Stallworth runs from his slot position by Lilo Lang and Eugene Burkhalter. A lot of crimson and gray on hand in Pullman. And they want to use play action pass because Eugene, Eugene Burkhalter is so aggressive. Tim Stallworth has become the first Pac-10 player since Mike Levenseller to top the 1,000-yard barrier. That's 1976, 12 years ago. Levenseller with a fine career in the Canadian Football League. Apparently, they wiped the penalty off. It's first and 10. It was a five-yard penalty, so they move it to the 28. An incidental face mask was called. And Washington State is called timeout. 13.20 to play, first half. Washington 21, Cougars 9, back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. A new way to shop and save has come to Kent. It's the new Kent Fred Meyer, and the grand opening celebration is going on now. You'll find beautiful jewelry and fashion right clothes for the whole family. Great ideas for home improvement and home entertainment. Fresh deli foods, European-style baked goods, and much more. And now, during the grand opening celebration, enjoy great music, exciting contests, and low prices throughout the store. At your beautiful new Kent Fred Meyer. And don't miss the first anniversary sale at our Benson Plaza store in Renton. My palms used to sweat when I had to get on the highway. Now with my Camry V6, I just punch. Yeah, punch it, Margaret. My Toyota, I love it. The 1989 Toyota Camry V6. 24 valves, 153 horsepower to please even the toughest customers. We just fell in love with life in the fast lane. My Toyota, who could ask for anything more? 
Keith Chipman, Sam Atkins, Todd Pickett on the Husky sideline, live from Martin Stadium in Pullman. The fans have braved the wind and snow and rain, and uh, they're here to watch their home team, if you will. Have a look at that. Their favorite receivers. Favorite targets. You know, a quarterback usually finds a guy that he can count on every time and knows what that guy's going to do. They're on the same wavelength. And you see the two pairs right there. First and 10 Cougars from the Husky 28. Swinton. Inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. It'll be a five-yard gain. Second and five situation now. Ricky Andrews, Chico Fraley made the stop. And here's Todd Pickett. He's Dave Beckham. His knee went out on him. They're going to let him rest, and then it'll be up to him to decide whether he wants to play again. After the last turnover, Tim Rosenbaugh gathered the offensive unit on the sidelines and chewed him out a little bit. As a result, the Cougars moving the ball a bit better. Back upstairs. Richie Swinton, five carries for 29 yards, now over the 1,000-yard mark in all-purpose rushing. Here he is again. Running hard inside the 15-yard line. Actually inside the 20-yard line. Oh, he's in the, inside the 15. I just got to get my eyes formed here. <laughs> it's not even You're snowing. Con your contacts are frozen. Richie yeah, Swinton you know. running very hard. Ricky Andrews missing a tackle, and that's what's allowing Washington State to run the football so well because they are not wrapping up the ball carrier. Ricky Andrews gets the first shot, overruns a little bit. Chico Fraley does the same thing, and Daryl Hall misses a tackle. Nine-yard gain. It's third and one. Swinton. And Dennis and Brown. Dennis Brown. Boy, I tell you what, that's a big, big task right there. And now there's a fumble. Washington says they have the football. Officials will stop the clock and try well, to unstack them. William Pelham saying he was down on the ground. And that's what the uh, line judge is saying right now, too. The head linesman, and Robert Beal, saying he was down already. You can read lips. Very good. <laughs> So it'll be fourth down, actually a first down. He gained yep. first down yardage. That was first and 10. Now it'll be second down. Not to first down, Sam, it was a third and one situation. I beg to differ. I don't want to argue on the air. <laughs> it's now. Well, I guess I was wrong. Dennis Brown. <laughs> Dennis Brown has a shot in the backfield. And you see Chico Fraley laying on his back. Boy, that ball came out when Chico was on his back. That was definitely a fumble. Washington State getting a break. Huge break for the Cougars, who, if they intend to stay in this ball game, need to score now. It is second and seven. Rosenbaugh chased out. This time he'll eat it. Driven out of bounds at the 10-yard line. They'll say the 11. Dory Murray got to it, along with Ricky Andrews. Tim Rosenbaugh learned his lesson because he had a similar situation on the same part of the field, broke out of the pocket, and threw across the field for an interception against Arizona State. This time, he decides to go ahead and keep the football rather than risk an interception. They've given Washington the ball enough in this first half, four times. This is Ricky Andrews, the Pac-10's leading tackler. It is third and seven from the 11 of Washington. No backs. Touchdown, Washington State. There's his favorite target, Tim Stallworth. Man-to-man -man defense. Tim Rosenbaugh, Washington playing man-to-man -man defense. Tim knows that. He looked to his right to get Chico Fraley out of the way and create a, thro a throwing lane so that Tim Stallworth could get his eighth touchdown. Tim Rosenbaugh moving Chico Fraley just enough to get the ball in there in front of Lilo Lang. The snap and placement are good this time, and Hansen adds the extra point after the 11-yard touchdown pass from Rosenbaugh to Stallworth, and Dennis Erickson's team is pulled within five with 11.42 to play, first half. Maybe you know us at Pemco Financial Center for our products and services, but the balance sheet isn't our only measure of success. We believe that what we do outside of work matters too. We sponsor youth camps, 
Donate to a host of charitable, educational, community causes. Underwrite a variety of people helping projects and grant scholarships to students across our state. So the next time you see a FEMPRO shield, you'll know it's protecting a way of life, not just safe drivers. These days, people are asking for a very special beer. Henry's. You make that too? Three. Henry Weinhardt's Private Reserve. Henry's for the house. A beer brewed only in Oregon, in limited quantities. Thanks. In the old-fashioned, traditional way. It tastes mighty good. It must get pretty hot out on the range. Range? Oh, no, we're here in the convention. This here is Harold home. Smith, PCI, Sales and Marketing Development. Henry Weinhardt's Private Reserve. And Larry Brennan, I'm in software. First half, Washington State is pulled within five. Steve Jones, William Doctor will line up their own that five touchdown. Yard line. Tim Rosenbaugh is now in the single season top ten for the Pac-10. It'll bounce out of bounds, therefore the penalty flag will be thrown, and Washington State will have to kick once again. <laughs> well, the officials are busy today trying to break up the little, the little shoving matches that are taking place all over the field, aren't they? The trouble is there's only one official who's breaking up all the fights. He went to two different fights that time. He's looking around for the other zebra saying, hey, cover my backside, please. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a pretty position to be in. No. They start going after each other. They got all that equipment on. You're out there with nothing more than three pairs of long johns and a, you know, a shirt. Cougars go 74 yards in six plays, and they strike quickly in less than two minutes. And it's a 21-16 game. Cougar marching band. With a little bit more to get excited about now, they have a sellout crowd here at Martin Stadium. We're pleased we're able to bring you this game live throughout the state. Wherever you might be in the Pacific Northwest this evening, we hope you're enjoying Apple Cup weekend. Jason Hansen kicking off once again after the five-yard penalty. A squib it through this time, and it might be on its way out of bounds again. Uh -oh. Indeed it is. Same place. And the official also is back at work breaking up a fight. <laughs> Boy, look at Dave Arnold. Yeah. Special teams coach for Washington State. Whoa. Yeah. Giving him an earful. Yeah. He just wanted to know how Jason's mother was doing and uh, making sure he had a soft enough pillow in the dorm. Because <laughs> if he does, he's going to change it. <laughs> oh, little Jay Langwin getting in. There's that official. Looks like he could hold his own. Yeah, Looks sure. Looks like a retired quarterback. Guy's only got six inches on him. <laughs> Trying to stay warm on the sidelines. They have the portable heaters. Actually, it's not nearly as cold as it was two years ago when they played here in 86 in an afternoon game. Uh, Don James mentioned yesterday during the Husky walkthrough at Martin Stadium, it's about 30 degrees warmer than it was that time, and indeed it is. We've seen snow today, but it's rather mild. Yeah, but he also finished the sentence and said, but don't tell anybody that. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stevie Jones. Out to the 40-yard line, and again, they're going after it. <laughs> the special teams players seldom get a chance to strap it on and uh, really go after them. And boy, I tell you what, we're seeing a lot of little isolated uh, shoving matches taking place. Stevie Jones has given Washington good field position, as has Jason Hansen's inability to keep it in bounds. And Washington State has 116 yards rushing and Washington allowing 191 yards a ball game. First and 10 Huskies from their own 40. Jenkins the lone setback. He's to the 45. Gain of five for Jenkins. It'll be second and five now. Danny Grayson, Randy Gray made the stop. There's Butch the Coog wearing the lay on his way to the Aloha Bowl on Christmas morn. William Dietz was the coach in 1914. He turned the Cougar program around. Dennis Erickson, of course, turned it around in 1988. 
second and five. Again, Jenkins alone set that. Grayson, the first man there for the Cougars, and he's out to the 48. A gain of perhaps four yards. And Sam, where Washington State, well, Washington State has already established the fact that it has put together a winning season. This is their fourth winning season during the 80s, and that has not happened in a decade since the 1950s. And the Cougars put together four well, winning yeah. campaigns. You have to credit the offense for that big turnaround, though. Third and a long one yard to go. They need to get to midfield. Boot. Coughlin will bootleg and pass. Incomplete. It appeared that Slater got hung up with Vernon Todd, but that ball may not have been catchable, Sam. No, it was not because... Mark Ledbetter from Newport High was bearing down on him. And Kerry Conklin pulled up. He's coming out. It's a good call, bootleg. They buy a little time. Brett Weesey coming out. He can't quite. You see Ledbetter come in and put a shot on Kerry Conklin. Channing Wiles is on to punt. It'll be fourth and a long one. And might Wiles try to throw the ball? I doubt it. Victor Wood signaling for a fair catch and does so at his own 14-yard line. Is that, that's where Washington State will take over first and 10. <laughs> 37 yards, actually 36-yard punt from Channing Wiles, who's performed rather admirably since taking the place of Eric Canton, who started with that 8-yard punt. Don James said that uh, the, the punting position will be open for competition come this spring because he also has a junior college person by the name of Troy McNair who pulled, tore a hamstring muscle early in the season. On first and ten. And Swinton. John L. Smith. I think we got a good defense that's getting a little fired up. John L. Smith. Second and eight. Swinton. Following the block of John Husby for a first down. And Washington State is now over 2,000 yards rushing for the season. Richie Swinton, what a story he is. He was accepted at Harvard, but decided to go to the Palouse and come Pullman to play some football. Gain of 11 yards in the previous play. It's first and 10 from the 26. Rosenbaugh. Very rarely does he do that slide version of a, of a stop. He usually tries to take on that backer head-to-head. -head. Or normally he'll run around and try to buy some time. The heads-up ball player, he's just sitting there, waiting, looking. Very good coverage by the Washington secondary. That's why they're number one in the Pac-10 in pass defense. And then Tim just puts a move on Ricky Andrews and then hits the baseball slide. Second and two situation, Broussard out to the 40. He has a first down behind the block of John Husby. Wonder who uh, Mr. and Mrs. Husby are rooting for. Both of them <laughs> went to Washington, and John is a Washington State Cougar. A redshirt junior from Bellevue's Newport High School. Playing across the line of scrimmage from an old teammate, strong side linebacker Marty Harrison went to Bellevue's Newport High as well. Rosenbaugh will pass. Incomplete. He bounced it in front of Tim Stallworth. That's what happens when a quarterback comes out. He was rolling, and he saw Tim Stallworth open. He sat there and said, I got to get him the ball real quick. Didn't get under control and simply drove the ball in the ground. Little worm burner. Jim Rosenbaugh now 4 of 10 for 78 yards passing. Well below his efficiency average. 
Marty Harrison just gets off the field in second and ten. All kinds of pressure from the Huskies. And Rosenbaugh airmails it to save it. A sack. Doug Wellsand was in the vicinity. We're not sure if he was in the same zip code, but he was in the vicinity. And excellent coverage by the Washington Huskies playing a zone defense. But the big thing that they did, the key to that, was they took away his outlet, which forced Tim Rosenbaugh to go to the outfit opposite side of the field you see the linebackers taking away the hook zone and then tim gets pressure and just simply has to throw the football away good coverage by so on third and ten washington state will go to work rosenbaugh passing wilson for the first down and into husky territory 12 yard passing game doug wilson the red shirt junior from ritzville He's back healthy again. He had a quad sprain against Stanford. That's his 22nd catch of the year now. The tight end has become a very important part of the Washington State passing game. First and 10 from the Husky 48. Rosenbaugh using that muffler to keep the hands warm. Uh, Broussard, and he's met at the line of scrimmage by Chico Fraley. Redshirt freshman from Rowan Heights, California. That's odd to see the crimson jacket and the gold gloves. <laughs> it's the only color they came in. <laughs> Chico Fraley came in as Washington's number two tackler behind Ricky Andrews. Chico has 119 tackles for the year. Second and ten. Seven and a half minutes to play, first half. Rosenbaugh hit as he got the ball away. A penalty flag is down. <laughs> The pass to Wimberley is complete, but I believe this is coming back, Sam. No, I disagree. I think it's holding on Chico Fraley because he just about tore Victor Woods' jersey off trying to cover him. Watch Travis Richardson come in from the right inside backer spot and lay a blow on uh, Mr. Rosenbaugh here. And that's almost as good as a sack because when a quarterback starts getting hit after every throw, he picks up the pace just a little bit and starts rushing the football so that he can preserve his body. He's been very fortunate in that he has not been injured during his career at Washington State, aside from maybe a few bumps and bruises. And speaking of uh, injuries, whoa. I guessed right. You sure did. That was a guess, I'll tell you. Boy, oh, Victor Woods' That's jersey. Loss of down, third down. A third and 25 situation as uh, apparently Victor Wood was the guy who held on to well, Chico not Fraley. necessarily that. I think they're just calling a pick play on Victor Woods. And that's why they called it offensive pass interference because those two collided when the football was in the air. Back to the Cougar 37. It is third and 25 now for Washington State. Rosenbaugh will pass. Big run. Fumble. John Husby recovered the fumble for Washington State. Travis Richardson forced it. And if Washington can do continue to do that, it's going to be a long day for the Washington State offense because they put pressure on Tim Rosenbaugh with only three men rushing. If they can put that kind of pressure on with only three guys rushing, that means they can drop eight people to take away all the underneath zones and force Washington State to go deep with the football. Loss of three on the play. It'll be fourth and 28. Rob Myers is on to punt for the Cougars. William Dock to the lone receiver. High kick. Fair catch signaled for. Fumbled out of bounds. And a penalty flag has been thrown. At about the 28-yard line. Sam, what do you think that's going to be? I don't know if he's going to call fair catch interference. But if he does, I don't agree with the call. It appeared he had enough room to make the catch and that he had to move to his right to receive the ball. But good Lord knows, as Don James often eludes to, but doesn't say, you never can tell what they might come up with. Let's hear what Larry Thompson, the referee, has to Let's say. Let's see. Interference for the no opposite way. to catch the kick. Five-yard penalty. Let's... Let's see if we can get a replay of that one because Randall McDaniel is the one who runs. He goes by him, 
See, he doesn't even come. He's got more than two yards. That's a Holy terrible cow. call. Creative officiating. That's right. Who? Got to give him two yards. Apple Cup 88 from Pullman. We're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. Yes. 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 To get yes. an answer out of businesses yes. these days, yes. you still yes. have to go to the yes. top. Yes. You just have to go yes. through a lot of levels yes. to get there. Yes. Yes. No. 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 At Puget Sound Bank, you can go right to the top by walking in the door. Yes. Puget Sound Bank, the hometown bank. While we were away, a couple of plays have been run. Aaron Jenkins gains six yards, and James Compton is just carried into Washington State territory. Sam, let's take another look at this play. James Compton into the ball game because Aaron Jenkins, I believe, lost his contact. But you see the great block by Aaron Pierce, and Compton just a bulldog, a bowling ball from Texas. And he's their short yardage fullback. That's his longest run of the year. 19 yards. But he's got 13 yards for the year. James Compton at fullback. It's Weathersby at the tailback spot. Here's Aaron Pierce in motion. First and 10 from the Cougar 41. Flea flicker. Conklin going long. Brian Slater, the intended receiver. It's batted away by Artie Holmes. No, nope, check that. It's Sean Landrum who knocked it down. And Sean Landrum wasn't fooled one bit. The old flea flicker run into the line of scrimmage. V-Dub takes two steps, turns around. Pitches it to Kerry Conklin, but Sean Landrum just turned and made a beeline, and he ran a better post pattern than Brian Slater. Slater was the intended receiver, and it is second and 10 now from the 41-yard line. Boy, Washington has really opened up the offense, Sam. Made for an interesting first half. 21-16, Washington leading Washington State. Five minutes to play. Conklin on the option to the 35-yard line. For a gain of six. Bobby O'Neill made the stop. I wonder who he's rooting for. I wonder what his parents think. Yeah. He's just doing his homework for partying 101 over here in the Palouse. <laughs> Third and four. Aaron Jenkins indeed had a contact lens problem. He will return and he is back in the ball game right now. Third and four. Conklin says he can't uh -oh. hear. And it's Kerry Conklin's job yeah. to try to <laughs> keep the crowd quiet. He yeah. has to turn to the referee, Larry Thompson, and ask for silence. Yeah. I think Kerry Conklin walked up to the line of scrimmage and saw the 25-second clock down because it really wasn't that loud. But I guarantee you it's going to show on the Richter scale the next time that he comes to the line of scrimmage because there was only one second left when he, when he was said, nope, uh, hey, I can't hear, ref, so Larry stops the clock, and it's so 0-0, zero, zero. so he saves a delay of game penalty. Great coaching, huh? Who? Oh, talk about being on top of everything. Now listen to the crowd. Third and four. I guess if he couldn't hear last time, he has to turn around. Can they call a retroactive delay of game? <laughs> <laughs> Going over the middle. Aaron Pierce with a brilliant catch. Nearly on his back. To the 25 and a first down for Washington. 10-yard game. Great coverage by Tanal Alapate. Kerry Conklin going to Aaron Pierce all the way. Probably the best receiving tight end on the Husky Ball Club. A redshirt freshman from Seattle's Franklin High School, Aaron Pierce, beginning to make his mark as a Husky. 
option actually goes inside. Jenkins carried the ball for Washington. A gain of three. It'll be second and seven. And Aaron got so far up into the line of scrimmage that he wasn't able to bounce outside because all the Washington State Cougars collapsed on the middle of the field. If he had been able to bounce outside, he would have gone probably for a score because everyone was gathered around that hash mark. Second, and they'll call it along seven. Call the 23. Weathersby behind Zandowski. He's to the 17-yard line. Dan Grayson made the tackle, and Washington is fashioned a nice little drive here. Those Husky fans. Aaron Jenkins, Vince Weathersby, the main ball carrier. Jenkins carried nine times now for 59 yards. Weathersby five times for 25. Third and two after a gain of five yards by Weathersby and Kerry Conklin starting to hear the noise again. Ball at the 18. Option. Conklin is to the 12-yard line and a first down for Washington. And Tony Savage making the tackle, tripping Kerry Conklin up. Ronnie Lee coming from a strong safety position just flew up the field, took away the pitch man. There you see the dive fake. Then Kerry Conklin comes down. Ronnie Lee goes up the field to take away the pitch from V-Dub. And Tony Savage just gets enough of Kerry Conklin's feet to trip him up. Third down conversion for Washington, two of seven. On first and ten, Weathersby to the nine-yard line. Maury Metcalf was there along with Tony Savage. Two minutes remaining in the first half that clock are running four yard gain it is second and six didn't have enough hotel rooms in the Pullman Moscow area to handle the huge crowd that came in a lot of people from Pullman opened up their homes to Husky fans kind of a little bed and breakfast situation in about 50 homes in the area second and six Jenkins inside the five and Washington continues to just play smash mouth football with the Cougars going between the tackles and that's where they run best they've had a lot of trouble getting outside on the corner putting pressure on the corners with the exception of the option game but when they go out of the eye run that toss sweep they haven't really lit the scoreboard up third and one Ball on the four-yard line. Aaron Jenkins, touchdown, Washington. Aaron Jenkins scores his second touchdown of the day. And the Huskies, who didn't look to have much chance against Washington State coming in, are doing what they do best in situations like this. They are playing out that role the underdog to their advantage coming into the ball game they had only been averaging 22 points a ball game that was just wanting to get into the end zone Aaron Jenkins is running very very hard McCallum's extra point is good and the Huskies have opened up an 11 point lead with one minute two seconds to play first half A 66-yard drive. A 12-point lead at 28 to 16. And in the last four quarters, the Husky offense has come to life. They have really done an excellent job of mixing it up. They have kept Washington State on their heels. They'll run the option. They'll run the option wide, 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 and then come back and hit it up the middle, hit it up the middle. See Aaron Jenkins running that power sweep again from the wishbone formation. Gets hit at the one-yard line by Ronnie Lee and Artie Holmes and just drives both of them across the goal line for a touchdown. And nice so run, Washington Aaron. State will still have to play that catch-up football. A four-yard touchdown run for Jenkins. He's having some kind of day for Washington. 
11 carries for 68 yards now and a pair of touchdowns. McCallum will kick off, and Washington State's offense would like to get on the field and do something in the final minute of play here in the first half. McCallum's kick is out of bounds, and they'll back it up now, and those little uh, mini wars continue among <laughs> special team players. Here's the Husky scoring drive, 11 plays, 66 yards, consumed 5 minutes and 12 seconds. And that was a very nice drive, mixed it up very well. I'll tell you what, the Husky offense has been most impressive in the first half. I think the best play of that drive was the third and five pass to Aaron Pierce, who caught mm -hmm. that ball falling down. It was a great play by Washington State. Nice coverage, but a great catch by Aaron Pierce. you got to think Aaron Pierce has a very bright future at the University of Washington. Miles Corrigan, the tight end coach, said he's the greatest athlete that I have ever coached. Now, that's pretty high praise. Well, and where does that place a guy like Bill Ames? May he be moving once again from another, you know, to another position. He's already played quarterback and on the defensive line and thought he had found a home at tight end. I think he will, too, because they like to run a lot of t two tight end offense. And they've got all three tight ends coming back. So they're in a sweet situation as far as the tight end for the Huskies. McCallum to kick off. Huskies lead the Cougars 28 to 12. Victor Wood reverses field. Penalty flag. He's out to the 28-yard line, but there is a flag on the play. And normally on those old kick teams, good things don't happen for the offense. We'll see what uh, the officials have to say after they huddle up. Illegal use of hands. on the offense and so Washington State the most penalized team in the conference continues to hurt themselves and here goes Kelly John Lewis to the dressing room a bit early I don't think he'll be back he had his choice they said they were going to going to be up to him whether he wanted to come back they were going to evaluate him when he leaves on crutches it's not a good sign boy the bookstores make a lot of money in a week like this wait, wait. Go down! Oh, against the offense on the return first down instead of being out at the 31 31 yard line Washington State will start from their own 19 Tim Rosenbaugh not looking pleased at all he's taking some shots today long setback is Broussard the Cougars will look to pass complete to William Pelham and he steps out of bounds to stop the clock up at the 25 yard line a gain of six which and again Washington Husky pass defense is forcing Tim Rosenbaugh the offensive line is giving him plenty of time but he just can't find anybody open he has to scramble around and you can't ask your secondary to cover everybody for that long Cougars have been double teaming Dennis Brown who's in at that left tackle spot Broussard out to the 33-yard line, but he's shy, uh, shy of that first down. Dory Murray, the senior from Bellevue's Interlake High, made the stop. And Washington State called a timeout with 38 seconds left. The third and two situation. At halftime, we're going to get you up to date on all of the Pac-10 games that were played today. We'll also, recap the first half for you. And That's a shot of the entire Husky defense around. Let's see, who are they? Who's talking to them? Chris Tormey yeah. and, and Randy Hart, the defensive line coach. There you see where they rank amongst their counterparts in the Pac-10. Well, 
again, it's still rather mild here in Pullman. It's not real cold. Well, the offenses have both been hot today. Here's Broussard on third and two. And he's going to be shy of the first down. Needed to get to the 34. The Cougars will call timeout once again. No, I think it's Washington calls the timeout because Steve Broussard did not make it, which will force Washington State to punt the football and give Washington a chance to come back and have a couple of shots at going to the end zone. Rob Myers has not had a punt blocked this year. And the Husky special teams in years gone by have been highly regarded. They're about the only phase at this moment that hasn't contributed to the scoreboard. Dennis Erickson wondering what his team's got to do at halftime to turn things around. He's going to stop by his office on the way to the locker room and tear out the speech that he used before at halftime against UCLA and use the same speech. <laughs> <laughs> you think they were ready to play today, Sam? What? Fourth and one. Myers. William Doctor deep to receive. He did not call for a fair catch. And as a result of that, Jay Langwin stuck him. Jay Langwin, one of the best special teams players for Washington State this year, along with Ron Ricard, backup cornerback. That was a close call for the doctor. So it'll be first and 10 Washington. They'll start from their own 39-yard line and would like to get into field goal position for John McCallum, who's long this year is 42 yards. That came against Arizona State. The Huskies 10-0 victory over the Sun Devils. Conklin will pass. Got hit as he let go of the football, and Aaron Jenkins can't find the handle. Mark Ledbetter is the one applying the pressure and the hit on Kerry Conklin. 18 seconds to play, first half. You can see the pockets in his jersey keep those hands warm bet between plays. But Kerry, again, standing strong in the pocket, gets hit by Mark Ledbetter and Ivan Cook. Conklin now just 5 of 15 for 36 yards passing. Second and 10. Ball in the Husky 39. Play action. Slater out of bounds at the Cougar 45-yard line. And that is good for a Husky first down. And you can see the strength of Kerry Conklin's arm throwing a frozen rope to the sideline. Ryan Slater just going down, selling the defensive back that he's going deep, and then just makes the catch. Sean Landrum comes up and knocks him out of bounds. First and 10 from the Cougar, 45. Aaron Pierce with a first down. He gets out of bounds with five seconds to play. Well, let's see here. He's at the 34. That would be a 51-yard field goal attempt. I think that's a little out of John McCallum's range. But just as I said that, Don James proves me wrong. McCallum has attempted a 51 yarder before but that was in the light desert air of phoenix actually is this Tempe not light against desert Arizona. air here I'll tell you what this light desert air during the summer pal but this is a <laughs> cold winter air right now a 50 yard field goal effort or a fake from john mccallum five seconds to go first half he'll kick it no good a bit short and wide to the left. As the first half comes to an end, the Washington Huskies have a 12-point lead over the Washington State Cougars and celebrate on their way into the dressing room. Back following these words from your local stations, this is Apple Cup 88. When you're on the road, a modern Texaco Star Station is always a welcome sight. With an automatic car wash, a convenient food store, and self-serve pump. All designed to keep your show on the road. Give a 1918 Ford Model T runabout bank. Priced just right at your participating Texaco retailer. It's a toy. It's a collectible. 
It's yours now at Texaco. I almost died about a year ago. It was my first time skiing. My mom made me wear a garbage sack under my jeans. I was just a little kid. I trusted her. I got all wet. I got really cold. Then these girls saw the plastic sticking out of my pants. They started laughing. I almost died. But I'm okay now, though. You can do better than that. 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 Yeah, I'm just gonna tell them. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. When the time comes to trade in an old Toyota on a new one, people are amazed at that Toyota's resale value. I can't do better than that. My Toyota. I love it. Who could ask for anything more? Tuesday. Let's put this $10,000 on my baby. What kind of guys gamble with the boss's money? Do we really hurt them by killing them? Good start. Swipe a killer's Cadillac and party on the mob's credit card. That's your next truck. The truck for 89. The all-new Toyota V6 4x4 SR5. The most advanced V6 engine in its class. All-new, on-the-move, four-wheel demand. And a brand-new look that says Toyota quality. It's everything I ever wanted. Toyota! You could ask for anything more. Live from Pullman, the 1988 Apple Cup is being brought to you by Fred Meyer. You'll find it at Freddy's. By Rainier Beer. The only beer to drink around here is Rainier. And by Pemco. We honor excellence. We are at halftime at Martin Stadium in Pullman. Cougars trailing the Huskies by 12. And, uh, boy, Sam, the Husky offense most impressive during that first half, coming out and playing the kind of football everyone expected from them throughout the season. They have 189 yards total offense through the first half, 62 yards passing, 127 yards on the ground. Washington State, on the other hand, has 142 yards rushing and 96 yards passing for a total of 238 yards. But what's the biggest stat right there is the four turnovers, leading to four Husky scores. Todd Pickett on the Cougar sideline. But the wind has already played a big factor in this game and will probably continue to do so. It has increased in intensity since the middle of the second quarter. It may be mild up where you are, but it has been very windy and very cold down here on the field since middle of the second quarter. Back upstairs. And as we look at the wind, it is blowing from left, or rather from right to left on your screen. So the Huskies have the wind at their back at this moment. John McCallum kicks off. It'll be Victor Wood from his own five-yard line. Cougars with the ball to start the second half. Wood is out to the 23, and that's where the Crimson and Gray will go to work to start the second half. Travel arranged through U.S. Air. Whether you're traveling to San Francisco for business or pleasure, U.S. Air has a convenient nonstop going your way. U.S. Air serving more California airports than any other major airline. It's Rich Swinton out to the 24. A one-yard gain, and snowflakes are beginning to fall once again. But they're little tiny snowflakes. I don't think they'll come into play just yet. Unless a whole bunch of them start falling at once. And they stick together. Then they become big snowflakes. Second and nine. Paul Wolf remains at center for Washington State. Swinton, the lone setback, goes in motion. Rosenbaugh over the middle. It's the tight end, Doug Wilson. Penalty flag thrown, a late hit on Darrell Hall. Yeah. Washington going to have to maintain their composure. Don James is not too pleased. Neither is Jim Lambright. Well, right now, Washington can't afford to let Washington State back into the football game, and things like this will 
allow that to happen. 18-yard passing game. What a great touch throw by Tim Rosenbaugh, getting the ball between Chico Fraley and Ricky Andrews. And then Daryl Hall, the reason that they threw the flag is because in college football, when you hit the ground, you're down. You can't bounce up. And Daryl Hall came in and speared Wellsand. And so you tack on the 15-yard personal foul penalty. It turns into a 33-yard gain, and the Cougars are at the Husky 43-yard line. First and 10. to move the football around a bit, I guess, Sam. Rosenbaugh, 7 of 14 for 114 yards now. Thing is, you have to credit the Washington Husky secondary in playing great pass defense, and Jim Lambright coming in with a very good game plan because they're taking away the short, the quick passing game. That's what they said the key is, I have to take away that quick passing game. Trips, right for, the, trips right for the Cougars. Broussard in motion to the left. Rosenbaugh with all kinds of time, and there's Victor Wood. Breaks a tackle, and he's to the 28-yard line. Chico Fraley. Made the tackle, but a 15-yard gain before he could bring him down. These are the type of plays that Dennis Erickson said shows the difference between the Big Sky Conference and the Pac-10. He says, in the big sky, you just complete a little pass over the middle, and then a guy runs 75 yards for a touchdown. Here, he says, they have such good athletes, they close on you so quickly. First and 10. And that's stopped immediately by Marty Harrison. Harrison, the junior from Bellevue, playing a nice ball game for the Husky defense. Broussard a bit slow to get up. And Marty Harrison comes in, sheds the block of Jim Mahalchek, and Martin Harrison plays his best defense when he can take off from a three-point stance. 6'5", 230-pound junior. Broussard receiving assistance from Cougar trainer Mark Smaha, who's also the president of the National Athletic Trainers Association. Broussard holding that shoulder. Last year, he played in the ball game, had a separated shoulder. They had popped it back in, and he came back in and played in the second half. But Broussard really got hammered by Marty Harrison. Rosenbaugh is now 8 for 15, 128, and tops Jack Thompson for the single-season passing record. A three-yard loss on the play. It's second and 13. Rosenbaugh will throw with penalty flags in the air, complete to Tim Stallworth at the 15-yard line, but this may be coming back. I believe there was a bit of movement on the Cougar offensive line. No, it was not on the offensive line. It was on Richie Swinton, who had gone in motion and couldn't hear the snap count and anticipated, turned up the field, took two steps, and then stopped, but he wasn't set long enough before Tim snapped the ball. So an illegal motion penalty will back the Cougars up five more yards and create a second and 18 situation. You see Tim Rosenbaugh flip that football and get Ricky Andrews to move out of the way, and then he turned back over the middle and saw Tim Stallworth wide open. He has the had off, shoulder man. problems, as Still Sam mentioned, down. in the past, but has played through them. One of the toughest kids that Mark Smaha has seen in all his years as a trainer. It is now second and 18 from the 37-yard line. Rosenbaugh will pass. Michael Wimberly cannot find the handle. And that is perhaps taking the Cougars out of field goal range for the moment. They'll need to gain perhaps another dozen yards to move into... If they get... Seven, if they territory. get seven yards, then I think it's in Jason's range. Although Jason has kicked a 67-yard field goal in practice, but that's not in this heavy, wet air. And with the wind at his face. Broussard, the single, check that it's Swinton, the single setback. Wilson for the first down. What a play. To the 17-yard line, Rosenbaugh to the tight end, Doug Wilson, a 20-yard passing game. And coming into this ball game, Washington State converting on 51% of their third-down conversions. And Tim looks to free safety off, freezes him, 
and Wilson gets by Greg Travis, and Tim just lays the ball in there right over the top of the linebacker. Junior from Ritzville. Right hash, ball on the 17 yard line. It's Swinton. Not a lot of room. And he gains perhaps one yard on the play. Brett Collins wrapped him up. And Todd Pickett is standing by on the Washington State sideline. Keith State on Steve Broussardi has a pinched nerve in the neck shoulder area. Being evaluated right now, they don't know yet whether he'll return to the game. Back upstairs to you. Gain of two on the play. So it's second and eight. We'll await the return of Tim Rosenbaugh. You can see that snow falling a bit more feverishly now, though it isn't anywhere near being warm. Rosenbaugh chased out. He'll get out of bounds. At the 16-yard line, Ricky Andrews escorted him. Most unkindly, as did Rob Willick, rather Bob Willick. The Cougar fans wanted a flag thrown because they thought it was a little bit of a late hit. beginning to look a lot like Christmas. And it isn't even Thanksgiving. Tim Rosenbaugh has now surpassed John Elway in total offense single season for the Pac-10. Third and eight. Incomplete. Victor Wood was the intended receiver. And Lilo Lang provided coverage, but they are well within Jason Hansen's field goal range. And Sam, the wind seems to be swirling in here now, and it is at Jason Hansen's face. That ball, Victor Wood makes the cardinal sin for a receiver. You never let the ball get into your body. You catch the ball with your hands, especially when it's cold. 32-yard field goal effort. Hansen out of the hole to Rob Myers. And it is good. 11.37 to play first half, or rather third quarter. And the Washington Huskies lead the Cougars 28-19 back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. Husky, born to work, bred to last. Pound for pound, nothing works like a Husky. The Husqvarna Chainsaw. They call it Husky. Raw power and lightweight make it the professional's choice. It won't let you down. Nothing works like a Husky. See your Northwest Husqvarna dealer today. Maybe you know us at Pemco Financial Center for our products and services. But the balance sheet isn't our only measure of success. We believe that what we do outside of work matters too. We sponsor youth camps. Donate to a host of charitable, educational, and community causes. Underwrite a variety of people-helping projects and grant scholarships to students across our state. So the next time you see a Pemco Shield, you'll know it's protecting a way of life, not just safe drivers. Dennis Erickson's team trails the University of Washington by nine points. This is his second Apple Cup game as head coach, and this is Don James' 14th. He has won 10 of the games that he has played in against Washington State, actually coached in. There's those big snowflakes you were talking about. They were so heavy, they knocked the football off the tee. <laughs> <laughs> games like this, you used to wear about 15, 16 layers of garment, didn't you? Yes, sir. Self-preservation. You just did everything you could to keep warm, except for those uh, short knickers you have to wear as a football player. You always stood by that heater anyway, didn't you? Uh, no, Jack wouldn't let us have those heaters, you know? We had to be real men. Well, Jack Patera brings back fond memories, doesn't it? Very fond memories. He's a good man. Had to be a good man to keep you on the sideline for six <laughs> years. I kept him entertained. <laughs> Steve Jones is out to the 27-yard line, and that's where Washington <laughs> will start first and ten. There's Broussard yeah. nursing that pinched nerve in his shoulder. 17 rushes for 64 yards, and he has seven 100-yard games this year. Leading rusher in the Pac-10, despite missing a couple of games. Cougars have been very productive in the second half this year. 
third quarter especially. First and 10. They place it at the 28-yard line. Coughlin to throw. Intended receiver was Brian Slater. Slater is one touchdown reception away from setting the University of Washington career touchdown reception mark. He's tied with Spider Gaines and Lonzel Hill, who each have 16. He has had an outstanding career at Washington. Won the big game. Definite started right pro here. prospect. His first big game was right here. Caught three touchdown passes in that 86 game. Remember that one-handed, left-handed catch? Great player. Second and ten. They'll pass. Jenkins out of the backfield. Tripped up. It's Vernon Todd. He's very close to a first down. And Aaron Jenkins is hurt. Hobbling a bit. It is a first down. Terry Conklin looking downfield. Quickly turns out and gets the ball to Aaron Jenkins. And you see Brian Slater make a nice block on Ronnie Lee, which allowed Aaron a nice little running lane. So first and 10 from the Husky 38. Weathersby dropped immediately by Mark Ledbetter, the redshirt junior out of Tacoma who attended Puyallup High School. And Mark Ledbetter coming off knee surgery during the bye week late in September. A one yard gain for Weathersby who hasn't really lived up to the expectations this year. Going back to Mark Ledbetter, the coaches say he's an overachiever, and he gets all that he can and gives you it all. Here comes that snow again on second and nine. Penalty flag down. James Compton carried the ball. Compton, the sophomore from Bandera, Texas holding penalty against Washington. And Aaron Jenkins comes back into the ball game not limping at all. But now Vernon Todd is limping. See if we can detect where the holding occurred. Yep. It's difficult to tell. I think it was the individual. I couldn't tell the number that was blocking Danny Grayson. Still second down. Because he got his left arm around on Danny Grayson's back, and that official saw that and threw that flag. Ten-yard penalty creates a second and 19 situation for the Huskies. Washington State has been penalized eight times in this game. Conklin, eight of 17 passing for 72 yards. Everybody out of the backfield. And he's dropped. Mark Ledbetter. Boy, and you could see that they were coming on a stunt that time. The defensive line for Washington State running a game where the tackle goes to the outside, the defensive end comes to the inside, and they just have their ears pinned back because they know that Washington is going to throw the football. Mark Ledbetter comes in. And sacks Terry Conklin. And look at the snowfall now. An 11 yard loss. Mark Ledbetter getting in to get after Kerry Conklin. Third and 30. Jenkins the lone back. Weathersby in the slot. They give to Jenkins. That's exactly what you want to do. You just want to say, okay. You guys won this series. We don't want to put it up in the air and risk because the chances of making a third and 30 situation are really slim. Fourth and 25. The ball is on the 23-yard line. Victor Wood is back around his own 40. Shannon Wiles will come on. Larry Thompson issuing a sideline warning to Washington State. for having too many men on that white line. They're enforcing that. It's a point of emphasis this year. And now he put time back on the clock. Not put four seconds back on the clock. 
9.04 to play. Third quarter, Washington leading Washington State 28-19. This is the 81st playing of the Apple Cup game, the cross-state rivalry. We're live. Eric Canton is back to punt. Number 37. His first appearance since the first quarter. He gets off a high kick, which forces Wood back to his own 34. Penalty flag coming through. Here's another one. And uh, is that going to be in the vicinity of a clip? Larry Thompson, the referee for today's game. Washington State will receive the football. It's just a matter of where they will be receiving it. A clip on the Cougars. And so that'll back them up. The most penalized team in the conference adds another one to their long list. 8.41 to play, third quarter. Back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. What makes the Bon Marche Super Sales super? For starters, you'll save 30% on Mrs. Sweaters and Blouses. Save 20 to 30% on the entire stock of fall coats. Save 25% on men's sweaters and heavyweight sport shirts. Men's wool sport coats, $79.99. Save 25% on kids' playwear. Any size Summit Down Comforter is just $89.99. Save 50% on open stock Chicago cutlery. And find special savings on Belt Cheek Cookware. The sale's on now through Monday at the Bon Marche. Don't miss it. Now you can enjoy windsurfing and parasailing at the same time with a flying wind weapon just beyond tomorrow, this Saturday. On Sunday, December 11th, the Seahawks battle the Broncos live from the Kingdome on Channel 13. What could drive a man to execute his best friend? Find out the secret police believe drove this California contractor to murder. Sunday night at 8. 8.41 to play, third quarter. Washington leading their cross-state rival, Washington State, 28-19. This is actually the 27th playing of the Apple Cup game, sponsored by the State Apple Commission beginning in 1962. Cougars have it first and 10 from their own 17. Rosenbaugh gives to Swinton. Swinton out to the 26-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Nine-yard gain. Swinton playing in place of the ailing Steve Broussard, who is sidelined at the moment with a pinched nerve in his neck or shoulder. However, there really isn't that much drop-off between Steve Broussard and Richie Swinton. <laughs> On second and one, Swinton for the first down. Beautiful night, huh? <laughs> the snow falling here in the Palouse. A chance to take a look at David Solheim all yeah. wrapped up in the end zone. He's going to have to ask for hazard pay in this weather. First and 10 from the 36. Swinton once again. He's out of bounds, shy of the first down. Cougars moving the ball now. On the ground, a six-yard gain. And Washington State using the short side of the field. They're getting the Huskies to think that they're going to run to the wide side of the field. Washington plays the field, and then they come back to the short side with that counter sweep. And we see the time to play third quarter. Here's Swinton, met at the line of scrimmage, still on his feet, and burst through for the first down. Mike Utley takes off his helmet, walks back to the line of scrimmage, feeling satisfied. After Swinton carries for the first down, an extra effort earned that one for the young man from Canoga Park, California. Great. Doesn't know where he's from, does it? <laughs> Never. Holy smokes. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. That'd be some serious brain damage there. And how much antifreeze do they have? <laughs> Paul Carr is the ball carrier, and he's into Husky territory. Cougars have moved on the ground during this drive. 
Mike Utley. Football News All-America selection. He'll likely play in some senior all-star games this year as well. Sam, where do they project him in the NFL draft? He's likely to be a first rounder and they'll move him outside to tackle. Second and six from the Husky 47. Rosenbaugh wants to pass. Being chased. He'll get out of bounds. To the 40-yard line, good for a first down. So a seven, actually an eight-yard gain for Tim Rosenbaugh. And he has passed John Elway's single season uh, total offense mark. And that is something John Elway set that record in 1982. Over 3,100 yards of total offense in one season. First and 10 from the Husky 40. Cougars trailing by nine with 7.15 to play. Third period, checking off. Goussard, or rather Swinton is the lone setback and he has the football. Down to the 36. A gain of four before Bob Willig wrapped him up. Eugene Burkhalter was also there. Dennis Erickson has elected to go back to the ground game and just drive it out. Notre Dame beat Penn State 21 to three today to remain unbeaten going into their matchup with USC next week. That game very well could determine the national champion. What a game that will be. Trojans 10 and 0, Notre Dame 10 and 0 as well. Second and six, Rosenbaugh on the bootleg with one man to beat. Rosenbaugh to the 10 yard line where he's driven out of bounds. The bootleg play that Don James was so afraid of executed wonderfully by Rosenbaum. Exactly, they keep going with it, going with it, running the counter sweep, and this time there's no one home on the backside. You see Paul Carr take the fake, double over like he has the football. Look at the Paul Wolf leading, blocking on Daryl Hall, and Rosenbaum, Eugene Burkhalter comes from the free safety position, horse collars, Tim Rosenbaum out of bounds. 25 yard gain on the play, it's first and 10 from the 11, they can make a first down. Rosenbaum, eight carries for 54 yards now. Six and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Swinton to the three. Todd Pickett is on the sideline with a former Cougar. Thanks, Keith. Michael James with us. Do you ever remember practicing in weather like this? Yeah, I remember practicing this weather. We never really got to play. We always went over to Idaho the week before the Husky began and played in the... In the this is your birthday, and you'd like to celebrate with a win. What happened the last time Cougars and Huskies played? Well, last time we won 17-6 over in Seattle, and that was when I was a freshman back in 83. So Keith, it's, it it's still real mild down here, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Lying to me, Todd. Second and three, Swinton... Is to the two. Michael James came up with a big catch in Washington State's upset victory over USC here in Pullman in 1986. Washington State utilizing Richie Swinton, and they have the luxury of rotating those two backs, Richie Swinton and Steve Broussard, because they would like to run the ball 40 times a game, but neither of those two guys are big enough to handle it 40 carries a game. So what they do is they alternate them and give them each 20 carries a ball game. It is third and one from the two yard line. And Washington State has elected to talk this over. Tim Rosenbaugh heading to the sideline to visit with Dennis Erickson. They're knocking on the door with 521 to play third quarter. No more mishmash faucet jobs. She'd find out how to do it herself at Freddy's. Unfortunately, now Dad's working on the lights. For my birthday, Aunt May gave me handkerchiefs. But Mom says returning them's no big at Freddy's, and I'll get a Tyco Turbo Hopper. But now I gotta break it to Aunt May. Husky fans, whether you live in Westport, Wenatchee, Walla Walla, or anywhere in Washington, PEMCO can save you money. Let PEMCO tackle all your personal insurance needs, auto, home, and boat. Discover our fast, friendly service. Then you'll know why over 300,000 Washington residents insure with PEMCO. And you can report a claim day or night, seven days a week. The clock never runs out at PEMCO. Put PEMCO in your court. Call for a free rate quotation 
now. Apple Cup 88, live from Martin Stadium in Pullman. Yes, it is snowing. Yes, it is cold. And yes, it is a sellout. And Washington State is looking at a third and one situation from the Husky two. They can make a first down. Swinton has first the down. first down, and it'll be four cracks at the goal line for the Cougars, who trail by nine. 28-19. The last timeout was called by Washington. Sam, why do you take a timeout in that situation? Because Washington State came out in a set that they didn't have the right personnel in the ball game. They wanted to get their goal line people in there, so they had big on big, so they didn't give them running lanes. Washington State's offense has scored 378 points this year, which is a new single season record. The old record was 317 yards in 1984 when Mark Riffin was at the helm. They're gonna bring the sticks in and measure this. And they're doing so right now. Washington State has indeed picked up that first down by half a ball length. They needed to get to the one yard line to earn the first down, they have done so. And the Cougars look at first and goal. And they have about 18 inches to move. I think with a, that big offensive line, it's pretty good that they'll make it. West Virginia finishes the season, the regular season, 11-0. On first and goal, Swinton, touchdown, Washington State. Swinton now has 103 yards, 20 carries, and moves to number eight on the single season rushing list with 928 yards passing carry Mort Porter. You see the bull drive, bull blocks by the offensive line, and Swinton just lowers his head. Goes behind Utley and Dyko. And the Cougars have had a running back over 100 yards in each of their 11 games this year. Jason Hansen adds the extra point. The Cougars are within two. 4.59 to play. Third quarter. We're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. Quick, up here. It looks just like you. Looking all right yourself, kid. Now when you buy a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates, you get a free plush musical ornament of Oliver or Dodger. The characters from the new Disney movie, Oliver and Company, now only at a theater near you. Oliver and Dodger make great gifts and even play a tune. Hey, Dodge, we made beautiful music together. Yeah, kid. Your holiday place, McDonald's. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. Pool! But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoop by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a Snow Scoop before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow Scoop by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. Well, the snow continues to fall here in Pullman. We're live from Martin Stadium. Sam Atkins, Keith Chipman, and Todd Pickett on the Cougar sideline. And that snow is melting and creating a, several wet spots on the turf. The scoring drive, 83 yards, 12 plays, 3 minutes, 42 seconds. And just one pass in that drive, the first down pass to Doug Wellsan. Jones and Doctor deep to receive for Washington. The ball fell off the tee. <laughs> How do you do, Charlie Brown? I wonder if Lucy was down there holding that one. <laughs> sure to make those football follies. <laughs> Nebraska beat Oklahoma today, 7-3. to three. Nebraska bound for the Orange Bowl to meet Miami. Have a look here. Well, you can hurt yourself if you're not yeah. careful swinging through there and whipping that leg without having any resistance. Oklahoma, by the way, goes to the Florida Citrus to beat Clemson after that 7-3 loss. The ball falls again. Roosevelt Noble comes over. At halftime, we heard the stats on Aikman and Pete. 
Barry Sanders rushed for four touchdowns today in 13th ranked Oklahoma State's 49-28 victory over Jim Walden's Iowa State team. Houston defeats Texas Tech 30-29. The Houston Cougars are Washington State's opponent in the 1988 Aloha Bowl on Christmas Day in Honolulu, Hawaii. It's Stevie Jones with room, and he's out to the 40-yard line. That's one thing that has hurt Dennis Erickson all day is that kickoff cover team. They're allowing Washington such good field position on the kickoff returns every time. They're starting in between the 30 and the 40-yard line is their starting position on these drives. Steve Broussard is headed for the dressing room, and his day may be complete. Steve Jones, by the way, is fourth best in the conference in kick returns, averaging 20.4 yards per return. Huskies start today. first and 10 from their own 40. The option game, Weathersby. Out of bounds at midfield. First down. A 10-yard gain from Weathersby. And a first down. Vernon Todd collided with him on the, his way out of bounds. Clemson with a 29-10 victory over South Carolina. They're headed to the Florida Citrus. Michigan going to the Rose Bowl after their victory over Ohio State. They'd wrapped it up a week ago. First and 10 from midfield. Jenkins gains seven yards on the play. Perhaps eight. Dan Grayson made the stop. They're to the Cougar 42-yard line. This has been a great ball game, and you know, Washington hasn't had an easy game all year. Every game that they've been in all year has gone down and been decided in the fourth quarter. True enough. I think Don James does that on purpose so people won't leave early. <laughs> you know, he calculates everything. Second and two. Jenkins has the first down. He's to the 39 of Washington State. A three yard gain on the passing play and the Huskies are moving the football. Sean Landrum made the tackle. Todd Pickett on the Washington State sideline. Keith, you saw Steve Broussard go into the lockers a minute ago, as you referred to. The snow has now changed to a light rain, and as you can see in what will be the right-hand corner of the Husky end zone, a lot of standing water. The conditions there are not good. Watch for traction there. Let's go back upstairs. Or lack of traction. 3.45 to play, third period. Huskies with a two-point lead, 28-26. Conklin to Weathersby. A first down. The Husky ground game on the move. To the 28-yard line. And an 11-yard game. Kerry Conklin running the option to a T. Forces Bobby O'Neill into no man's land. Kerry comes downhill, gets hit by Danny Grayson, but Bobby O'Neill is flat-footed, so he can't make the play. That's excellent execution of the option. The Get as much as you can and then pitch it. The senior from Los Angeles with eight carries today. First and 10. Conklin to Jenkins. Jenkins to the 19-yard line of Washington State, and they're ever so close to a first down. Bobby O'Neill made the stop. And they're going to be shy of that first down by about a foot. They won't even measure. It'll be second and a short yard. Great down, great throwaway down. Third quarter time. Jenkins for the first down. And Washington, we've said it time and time again today, Sam, has been very impressive offensively. Oh, yeah, this is the best they've looked all year. Moving up and down the field and, and putting together a drive like that after Washington State goes down and scores. And then if they can come back and answer, that might uh, stifle Washington State. 
First and 10 from the Cougar 16. Fitzgerald in motion. Weathersby. Drop for a loss, Ivan Cook. Back to the 19-yard line. Cook, the senior from Roseville, California. And that's his first tackle for a loss this year. Ivan Cook, and see, again, you look at Washington running the sweep out of the I formation, and Ivan Cook just makes a beeline outside. That's why they put the option in and are running the option so much to take advantage of that perimeter running game. Second and 12 after the loss of two yards. Option, Weathersby. Driven out of bounds at the nine yard line. Very good block by Scott Fitzgerald, which allowed V-Dub a nice running lane. Vernon Todd came across the line of scrimmage Fitzgerald just drove him up the field into the backfield, and B-Dub had a nice short corner. A nine-yard gain from Weathersby. Husky rushing in 88. They're over their season average with a minute to play, third quarter. Jenkins, the lone setback. Weathersby in the slot. With time, Conklin dropped by Tony Savage at the five-yard line, but it's good for a first down. And so Washington will have five opportunities. And Washington State playing a double zone coverage down at the goal line. Kerry Conklin wanted to go to the tight end Aaron Pierce, but he got bounced around by middle linebacker Danny Grayson. So Kerry comes, takes it under. You see the double zone, the two safeties on the top, the corners rolled up, and there's Aaron wide open but Kerry has to pull it down under. First and goal from the Cougar five. Jenkins bulldozes his way down to about the three yard line, perhaps the two. They'll bring James Compton in now at fullback. Looks like Danny Grayson is hurt just a little bit. He's holding that right arm. Could be a shoulder problem, which means to now all the pate will come in. A senior who hasn't played a great deal in the second half of the season after Grayson established himself at that middle linebacker spot. To now started the first five ball games and then was somewhat of a disappointment. He's a team captain and everything, but he just wasn't making the plays. Granted, he did have that dislocated thumb and that inhibited his tackling ability. Second and goal. Weathersby is not in. He is to the one. He better be careful in waving that football around, trying to get it across the goal line. A Cougar can come along and knock that off, knock the ball loose. And that will be way. the final play of the third quarter. Don James, Washington Huskies, are a yard away from the end zone. And they lead the Washington State Cougars 28-26 following three quarters. Back following these words from your local station, this is Apple Cup 88. Every year, Sea First helps thousands of people in Washington to buy a home. We help more people in more ways than any other bank in the state. Whether it's the house around the corner or a cash withdrawal wherever you go. We help over a million people every day, one at a time. What's the bottom line? Your Western Washington Toyota dealer's 89 intro sale with introductory deals on the all-new Toyota trucks, the trucks that hold their value better than any other, that outsell their nearest competitor two to one, that have been completely redesigned from the ground up. And these are the trucks that now have extra value packages. No better trucks, no better deals, no better time. And that's the bottom line. Apple Cup 88. The Washington Huskies versus the Washington State Cougars is being brought to you by your local Yamaha dealers and Snow Scoop. Snow Scoop, it's a whole new way to have fun in the snow. By Chevron, they fuel your freedom. 
and by your Western Washington Toyota dealers. Who could ask for anything more? Two points separate the Washington State Cougars and the Washington Huskies as we move to the final quarter of the 81st cross-state rivalry between the Cougars and Huskies. Apple Cup 88, and the ball rests one yard from the end zone. Third and goal for the Washington Huskies. Jenkins stopped in the backfield. Safety blitz, Artie Holmes comes through untouched. Correct the ball carrier, it was Vince Weathersby. And, and Washington will have to settle for a field goal. A loss of three yards on the play, and that will bring on John McCallum. Vince That's Weathersby talking with Matt Simon, the running back coach. And Washington State players are telling the crowd, get into it so they can't hear the snap count. 20-yard field goal attempt from McCallum. He's perfect from this distance this year in five attempts. And he remains perfect. Six for six now inside the 30. And this 20-yard field goal has given Washington a 31-26 advantage with 14-15 to play in the fourth quarter. Now, that is a big, big play by the defense, and the defense has been able to come up with some big plays for Washington State in the fourth quarter this last half of the season. Against Stanford, they come with an interception. Against UCLA, they stop the drive. But they come with that offside sweep again. They run it almost every time down on the goal line. Artie Holmes anticipating, comes through untouched, gets Vince Weathersby before he can get underway. But because they held him to a field goal, now Washington State, if they get a touchdown, they take the lead. Dennis Erickson looks exhausted. He is exhausted. Exasperated. This is a great ball game, and I guarantee you he will sleep tonight. Well, there have been some great games in this series, too. One remembers the 81 game in which the winner went to the Rose Bowl. The Huskies won that game 23-10. The upset here in 82 at Martin Stadium. People talk about the 1960 game in which the Huskies defeated Washington State 8-7. This will go down as one of the more memorable games as the Huskies come up with a great offensive and defensive and special teams effort to this point. This is Ed Tingstead to return. And he's wrapped up and bulldozed down by Virgil Jones. Tingstead, the senior from Spanaway, his brother Mark having a good year for Arizona State, which closes out the season next week against Arizona. We are live in Pullman. Big drive for Washington State right here. See if they keep it on the ground again and drive it down the field, or if they try to mix in the pass now. Start first and 10 from their own 17. Here's Swinton. Lots of room. Eugene Burkhalter actually uh, drove him out of bounds. That's Paul Carr. Paul Carr carried the ball. Now Richie Swinton's coming into the ball game. Paul Carr's longest run of his career. 22-yard effort from Paul Carr. That counter sweep, Mike Utley coming around. Normally they run that to the weak side. This time they run it to the strong side. A Bringing six. Mike Utley, Chris Dyko around. Freshman from Bellevue, Washington. Played at Bellevue High. First and 10. Cougars at their own 39. Rosenbaugh wants to pass. Feeling the pressure. Go up. Steps out of bounds at the 44-yard line for a gain of five. So it will be second and five from the Cougar 44. Todd Pickett is on the Cougar sideline. Keith, you see Dan Grayson. Uh, they worked on him for a mild pinched nerve. He's huddling now with the rest of the defensive unit and is expected to come back into the game next time, back upstairs. Just like a true linebacker. Those stingers don't bother them. Second and five. Swinton. Whoa. Ricky Andrews made the tackle. 
They're going to spot the ball where his knee touched. And the crowd is booing. They want to we see Jim Mahalchek come around, block Travis Richardson. And the officials are marking it back, like Keith said, short of the first down where his knee touched. It'll be third and one after a four-yard gain from Swinton. The ball is at the 48-yard line of Washington State. 13-17 to play. Final period of Apple Cup 88. Huskies with a 31-26 lead in an offensive shootout. Paul Carr. Well short of the first down. Check that, it was Swinton. Ricky Andrews made the all-important tackle on third down. A loss of two yards on the play. Tremendous pressure and penetration by Washington. Look at them, how much they're, how deep they are in the backfield. Dennis Brown upfield, and then there's Ricky Andrews beating Ken Kuyper. Getting inside and stopping them, not allowing the first down. Fourth and three, it's Rob Myers with William Doctor deep to receive from his own 16. A penalty flag has been thrown on the play back at the 48-yard line, and so we'll have to wait and see what this flag is about. And Dave Arnold, special teams coach, is not too pleased. Let's see what the flag is. Illegal procedure against Washington State. So will Don James have them come back and kick it again? Indeed he will. Let's take the field position so they will bring it back and punt once again. Well, you have to make him kick again when you got a guy like Rob Meyer who's only averaging 35 yards. He hit that one pretty good. And he's going to make him do it twice. Illegal procedure against the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty and a re -kick. So back him up five. That's why Dave Arnold was upset because you've got to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Their formation was bowed just a little bit. Cougars have been penalized 10 times in this game for 75 yards. And the Aloha Bowl is here today. Bill Thompson is their director of operations. We will chat with him most likely after the game today. And uh, he's here to tender an invitation to Washington State to meet Houston on Christmas morning in the seventh Eagle Aloha Bowl game. Boy, the Cougars want to go there with a victory under their belt and an 8-3 record. They'd be all that much more attractive to the bowl people as well. Myers punting once again, and he gets out of a beauty. Doctor to his own 12, but he's beat the coverage, and another penalty flag is up. No, I guess not. No penalty on the play. There is no penalty with 12.07 to play. Fourth quarter, Washington State trailing Washington 31-26 back. Your Northwest Ford dealers are setting the record straight. There's only one number one and four zip. Ford Escort and Taurus are the best-selling cars in America. The Ford F-Series is the number one selling full-size truck in America. And Ford Ranger is the number one selling compact truck in America. The numbers are in, and Ford has the best selling cars and trucks. It's enough to stop the competition cold. See your local Northwest Ford dealer today. We're winning the Northwest over. Hey, there's a lion. Catch him. Ah, oh, we're losing him. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Up ahead, they're in Texaco. Is that a hint? Texaco Super Unleaded with a higher octane blend helps restore lost power and keeps your engine running clean. Get a Huskies mini football for just 99 cents with a Super Unleaded fill-up at your participating Texaco retailer. Without purchase, $1.99. Have a ball at Texaco. Trailing Washington, 31-26. 12.07 to play. Final period, Aaron Jenkins, the ball carrier for the Washington Huskies.
And Washington on that re-kick netted a gain of 11 yards because William Docker was tackled at the 15, or excuse me, they netted 12 yards because after the kick, re-kick, they lined up at the 27-yard line. So a second and nine after the gain of one. Jenkins out of the backfield. Sean Landrum made the tackle. Landrum, the redshirt senior out of Long Beach, California. Jenkins, a senior out of Stockton. He had a very Sean fine Landrum team. has played a great ball game. Washington State's favorite coverage is a double zone or a cover two, whatever you want to call it, where you have both the corners rolled up. And it's very tough to complete those swing passes because the back never has a chance to get underway. And that's why they're being stopped for no gain or very little gain. Third and five from the Husky 32 with split backs. Weathersby and Jenkins, he'll throw to Jenkins. Incomplete. Maury Metcalf coming on a delay blitz, forcing Kerry Conklin to throw the ball early. Ronnie Lee provided coverage for the Cougars. We'll see it again. And Danny Grayson coming up the middle, and then Maury Metcalf coming off the outside corner untouched and Ronnie Lee closing from his strong safety position. And Aaron Jenkins is being helped off the field right now by Scott Jones. And this could be a severe blow to the Washington offensive attack. Jenkins has been a cog today. So fourth down for Washington, fourth and five. Eric Canton is on to punt once again. Block! Washington State, Sean Landrum blocks the punt. The first kick block this year for a Washington punt team. And they had two blocked last year. And Don James said this, that is one of his concerns to improve this year was the special team, but Sean Landrum just blows in off the corner, takes the ball right off of Eric Canton's foot, and then the Cougars come up with the recovery. Sean Landrum was good. And boom. Jay Perfect Langwin position. recovered it. Jay Langwin beats Eric Canton to the football. Washington's first well, turnover, if you will, of the day. Rosenbaum, the bootleg. He'll run out of bounds. Back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Briscoe chased him to the sideline. And Washington State is going into that wet end zone that Todd Pickett talked about earlier. I was watching Elmer Thomas go down into the end zone, and he was trying to run a sideline route, and he was having a little bit of trouble running an out route. Todd Pickett on the sideline. Keith, Tim Rosenbaum spent the last defensive series on the sidelines being checked. He took a helmet in the ribs. They asked him, can you throw? He said, I don't know. Back upstairs. They've run the first two opportunities. Swinton inside the five, or actually to the five-yard line. Swinton hobbling just a bit as well. A nine-yard gain, and Paul Carr has come on for Washington State as Swinton hobbles with a right ankle, apparently injured. Husky defense, awful stingy with the points. Third and two at the Husky five. Rosenbach checking off, and he'll call timeout. There were just five seconds on the clock, and he's walking to the sideline with that arm and right arm. Well, the reason his right arm, though, Keith, he's holding warm. like that. He's got that muffler on, so he's got his right hand in the muffler. It's not his right arm. But they don't know whether he can throw the football. And he walked up to the line of scrimmage, and Washington has been adjusting and shifting at the last moment. So he was waiting and holding out. He was waiting for Washington to declare what they were going to do and then realized he only had six seconds left on the 25-second clock, so he was forced to take the timeout because he was going to change the play. Third and two, 9.51 to play, final period here at Martin Stadium. Tim Rosenbaugh had some words to say after last year's game. 
This year he has led his stats through the talking. Don James, 14th year at Washington. Cougar offense, tops among Pac-10 teams, 10th in the nation. They scored 46 touchdowns this year. On third and two, Swinton. He's shy of the first down. They're at the five. Tony Zachary in to make the stop. And the end zone erupts. That is where Husky fans are located. And Dennis Erickson looks like he's going to go for it on fourth down. Indeed he is. Biggest play of the year for Dennis Erickson's Washington State Cougars. And boy, they had some big ones against the UCLA Bruins. Fourth and two. They are elite. seven for 11 in fourth down conversion. Bootleg, Rosenbach has the first down, has touchdown. the touchdown. Whatever Dennis Erickson makes, he just earned a raise. They are now eight for 12. And Rosenbach's shaken up. Those ribs, they are a hurting. They'll go over, throw an ice bag on there. But the way they're running the football right now, Brad Gosson can come into the ball game and just hand off to Richie Swinton. But they come with that bootleg. You see the Husky defense flow that way. Ricky Andrews runs with Richie Swinton, and Rosenbaugh cuts it back and finds the end zone. The Cougars are going to see the 25 uh, second clock expire but they chose to take a timeout just before that in regard to the point after touchdown attempt that's right right there the shot from greg travis is what caused tim rosenbaugh to feel a little bit of pain and the cougars have regained the lead with 906 to play fourth quarter 32 31 jason hansen no, you go for you point go after two. touchdown guy, but you're going to go for two here. You go for two here because you already have the lead, and at least you put yourself in position for a tie. One point doesn't do you any good, so you want to go for two because then a field goal will tie you. Rosenbaugh, five carries, 63 yards, and a touchdown to boot. What a courageous performance by Tim Rosenbaugh coming in, doesn't know if he can throw, and leads him down. But you got to go back to Sean Landrum, Jay Langwin, coming up with that great special teams play. Don James wrapped up in another thriller this year. What a great game this has turned out to be. Boy, oh boy. Who cares if it's raining or snowing <laughs> or whatever it might be? This is great football. Those They're folks. going for two. Rosenbaugh slips, he can't get into the end zone. The turf becomes a factor. He lost his footing at about the five yard line and he is very slow to get up. The point after touchdown fails, but Washington State has regained the lead with 9.06 to play, third quarter, back follow, or fourth quarter, back following these words from your local stations on Apple Cup 88. Quick, up here. It looks just like you. Looking all right yourself, kid. Now when you buy a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates, you get a free plush musical ornament of Oliver or Dodger. The characters from the new Disney movie, Oliver and Company, now only at a theater near you. Oliver and Dodger make great gifts and even play a tune. Hey, Dodge, we made beautiful music together. Yeah, kid. Your holiday place, McDonald's.
Cougars regained the lead on this play. Tim Rosenbaugh running five yards to the end zone. Tim Rosenbaugh now has five carries, 63 yards. Stevie Jones will let it fall through the end zone, and Washington will take it first and 10 at their own 20. And you kick it away from Steve Jones, or you kick it to William Doctor. Either one of them are probably going to hurt you. Don James, football team, looks at 80 yards. And Kerry Conklin, 11 for 21, 88 yards. And four carries for 17 yards. Now, big drive, gut check right here for the Washington Huskies. They've got to answer this with some points on this drive. 9.06 to play. Apple Cup 88. Compton and Weathersby are the backs. It's Weathersby. To the 25. Jenkins must still be hurting. Landrum made the stop as Compton was in the game. Randy Gray put a hit on Kerry Conklin with that option. And Brad Gosson is warming up come into the ball game. Brad Gosson, the redshirt sophomore from Westlake Village, California. Backed up Rosenbaugh in each of the last two years. Played in four ball games so far this year. But most of that was early season. And they were blowing people out. Second and five. Batted down by Tony Savage. A redshirt junior from San Francisco. Creates a third and five. And Tony Savage played a whale of a ball game against California. And after that ball game, Dennis Erickson said, that was probably the best game I've ever seen played by a defensive lineman. But Randy Gray coming in untouched, forcing Kerry to get rid of that football. Got his hand up over Vern Brostek. Third and five. Compton is the lone setback for Washington. Weathersby in the slot. Incomplete. Weathersby was the intended receiver. Coverage by Bobby O'Neill, who was right there with Vince, step for step. But now the turf is starting to get a little bit slippery. You have to give credit in that series to Randy Gray. There's a guy playing with a broken leg. He's in an air cast all week, but comes out and plays on game day. He's got a broken bone below his knee that right leg. Bobby O'Neill was in on the coverage on the incomplete pass. It's fourth and five. Watch Canton, Canton is back now. again. Victor Wood in a very short kick. Whoa. It touched a Cougar player yes. and Washington may have recovered. Yes. Artie Holmes was hit in the back of the foot by the kick. And a short kick turns out to be Washington's football. He was turning, trying to run away from that football. Scott Fitzgerald comes up with the football for Washington. 8.09 to play. Final period, and we're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. From the land of sky blue waters, waters. From the land of fine, slumpy bosses, comes the beer refreshing, comes the beer refreshing. Dance and sparkle in each glass bowl. Hams beer. For a limited time, Hams, Hams Light, and Hams Draft has a special money back offer. See your local store or newspaper for details. The world-class value of Dodge Dynasty. Choreographed for the road. Accompanied by fuel-injected V6 power. And six of the best seats in the house. The 1989 Dynasty. The new spirit of classic performance. Only from Dodge. See your Puget Sound Dodge dealers now. Stadium. Victor Woods telling everybody to get away. Artie Holmes turns and runs away, tries to get away from the football, but it hits him in the back, and Scott Fitzgerald comes up with the ball for Washington. 
20-yard punt. The ball's at the 45, first and 10 for the Huskies. It's Weathersby, dropped by Tanel Alapate. They'll spot it at the 44, a loss of one yard. Classic linebacker Phil, find a hole and go in the seam. There he beats the oncoming lineman who was supposed to trap in that hole. And Tanel makes the tackle on V-Dub before he gets underway. James Compton remains in the game for Washington at fullback in place of Aaron Jenkins, who came off shaken up. Weathers be the tailback. Second and 12. Incomplete. Intended for Scott Fitzgerald, and he's going crazy. Whoa. He just fling that football and hit the official. I'm a little surprised the flag wasn't thrown there. Well, he got hit in the lower abdomen, so he couldn't uh, throw the flag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Burn. <laughs> well, the Husky coaches will get him out there quick, uh, out of there quickly, so he doesn't commit a mental mistake. That's right. But what? It's a good call by the official because his knee hits first, out of bounds, then his foot drags. So that is a very good call by the official. Let's see if we can see it better from this angle right here. Watch his knee go down. It's out of bounds, on the line, That's right. and then the foot drags. Very good call on third and 12 now. Over the middle. I think the Huskies might have a darn good case for pass interference there. Boy, you look at that sideline, and they believe so. Artie Holmes came right through the intended receiver and hit him before the ball ever got there. Seven minutes, 17 seconds left in this ball game. A lot of time. It'll be fourth and 12. Conklin now 11 of 25, and Don James can't believe that call. But again, you have to look at Eric Canton. Gets off a 20-yard punt last time. And I'm surprised. I am surprised that Dennis Erickson isn't putting two people back for deep safety so at least he can catch the football. Victor Wood catches it at his own 24. I still think that was pass interference. Maybe not. I don't think so. Todd Pickett is standing by on the Cougar sideline with an update for it. Keith injury updates both ways. Rich Swinton with a little bit of a cramp and a calf. He's back. Tim Rosenbaugh's only injury, still the bruised ribs. There's nothing wrong with his arm. And Husky running back Aaron Jenkins, what can be called a mild concussion. He's being held out of the game right now. Back upstairs. Boy, Richie Swinton must really be working if he's cramping up in this weather. <laughs> First and 10 from the 24, and it's Swinton. Ricky Andrews, Chico Fraley. Clock running with 6.58 to play, and the Cougars have a one-point lead, 32-31. A one-yard gain for Swinton. And check that, a four-yard gain. It'll be second and six. And now it's time for Tim Rosenbaugh to start thinking about using that clock, using every bit of the 25 seconds. As he's standing there, there's 15 seconds left right now. He's going over the middle. Complete, incomplete. They'll rule oh, they an incomplete, incomplete pass. No, there's the official right there. Oh, official on top of it, calling it incomplete. And Bob Bratkowski, the offensive coordinator, on the sideline going nuts. Doug Wellsant, the intended receiver. The whole Cougar sideline was jumping up and down over there. That ball was just a little bit short. You have to wonder how Tim Rosenbaugh's ribs are. It looked like a wobbly toss as well. It is. It's a little bit end over end, short. Wellsant goes down. Never really had possession. Incomplete pass. We'll see it again from the end zone. Rosenbaugh sets up and then throws. Sees Wellsant open. He goes down, but he never had possession. Trips left. Man coverage. Oh. That's Dory Murray in to make the stop. They came on a blitz. You could tell because Eugene Burkhalter went over to cover Richie Swinton, who went in motion, anytime the free safety covers the back, you know those linebackers are coming, so you better be ready and have your head on a swivel. Dory Murray, who had such a fine game a week ago, has played, worked through injuries. Finds himself starting today in the Husky special teams 
looking for a big play now. Rob Myers back at his own nine-yard line, and here they come. Nearly blocked. Doctor will let it go. They were bringing everyone. It'll be down at the 41-yard line. 5.44 to play, fourth quarter, and we're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoop by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a Snow Scoop before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow Scoop by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. At Chevron, we've been taking a long, hard look at ourselves. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Come back soon. Come back real soon. Hi. How are you? Hi. How are you? And while we're the first to admit that not every station is absolutely perfect, we're working on it. Chevron, we fuel your freedom. Wonder what school that guy hails from. Or <laughs> oh, that animal, we should say. First from the and ten animal Washington house. At their own 41 yard line. There's the Husky section in the end zone here at Martin Stadium. Penalty flag before the play got underway. Brett Weesey starting just a little bit early, jumping the snap count. Washington needs to pick up about 29, 30 yards to get in field goal range for John McCallum. There's, you see Brett Weesey rolling just a little bit before the snap and getting out there. Nothing Good against by those referees. Start against the offense. Still first down. Well, Two almost seconds. anything. Two seconds to be added to the clock. Five minutes, 43 seconds should be the time remaining. Two. So it'll be first and 15 from the Washington 36. Harry Conklin with James Thompson in the backfield. Weathersby at the wing. Wants to throw. It's complete to James Sawyer. Bobby O'Neill brought him down. A gain of perhaps four on the play. And Kerry Conklin was just a little bit late because he trips as he's on his drop back, which caused him to be just, see, there's the little stumble, and then he's a little bit late, and it, Sawyer could have outrun Bobby O'Neill coming across the field. James Sawyer, the freshman from San Jose. Finding time this year. Put into duty with the absence of Andre Riley, who went down with a knee injury early. Boy, he's been sorely missed by the Huskies. Second and 11. Slater, off his fingertips, incomplete. We haven't heard Brian Slater's name much today. He's about due for a big play. They've been following him. They've been shadowing him anywhere he goes. He goes 12 rows up in the stands. There's going to be somebody following him. Because Dennis Erickson said, that guy scares me. He is a player. Plus the fact that he's six feet four inches tall, and they've been trying to cover him with five foot ten inch defensive backs, and that's he's been eating those guys alive all year long. Slater, three catches for 38 yards. Kerry Conklin looking at third and 11 from the Husky 40 yard line. High formation, Thompson and Weathersby. They'll go play action. Conklin wrapped up, and that's going to be a penalty flag. He was throwing at linemen. But that may have been a good move because you'll only lose, what, 15 yards instead of 20? Let's see, 60, 58, 79. Those are the only numbers that were around the football. Marlon Brown was applying pressure. A loss of down as well. And Marlon Brown has his day in the sun, if you'll excuse the cliche on this cold day. And Marlon Brown applying the pressure. They run a play action pass. And then Kerry Conklin feels that pressure. And Marlon just keeps chasing him. 
Terry tries to spin out of it, but Marlin has too much big a grab of that jersey, and to now Alapate comes in and also delivers a shot to Kerry Conklin. Is that a spot foul? Because they've gone back to the 12-yard line, a 28-yard loss. And loss of down. So Eric Canton standing in his own end zone. Victor Wood at the Husky 46. Cougar showing a return. And Canton gets off one of his better kicks of the day. Wood from his own 48. Wrapped up at midfield. Ivory Randall. And you and saw Wood. Victor Wood, the way he doubled up over that football. He's not about to make a mistake, turn the football over, and give Washington good field position. 4.36 to play. Dennis Erickson's team with the football and a one-point lead at 32-31. They have one timeout remaining. Washington has two timeouts to utilize if they so desire. Swinton is, or was the setback. Rosenbaugh throwing incomplete. That went through the hands of Eugene Burkhalter. The intended receiver was Tim Stallworth. We haven't heard Stallworth's name much in the second half. Huskies have done a good job keeping him out of the flow. And, and you'd think that Washington State would want to keep the football on the ground to use up as much of the clock as possible. Now, second and ten situation. The ball at the 50. Rosenbaugh is 9 of 20 today for 148 yards. Here's Swinton with lots of room. Richie Swinton to the 25-yard line. Big play for the young man from Canoga Park. That guy's nuts. Aloha with no shirt on. Man. They wonder about and he that. hurdled Eric Briscoe just coming right up the middle. Watch the blocking by Paul Wolf, Mike Utley, Jim Mahalchek. And Richie just blows by Chico Fraley, hurdles Eric Briscoe, and Eugene Bur Burkhalter loses his footing and goes down. First and 10, the ball at the 26 after a 23-yard gain from Rich Swinton. They'll give it to him once again. Nice play by the Husky defense. Tony Zachary up from his corner spot to make the stop. Clock rolling in four minutes to play. Fourth quarter. And Richie Swinton going up the middle. What a devastating block by Mike Utley. Keith Shipman, you could run through that hole. You could get two, three yards on that one. No comment. <laughs> My problem is I have to get on a bicycle to get through it fast enough. Second and 15 after the penalty for procedure. Check that. The, the loss. Tony Zachary coming up to drop Swinton for the loss. There it is again. Eric Crisco up this time to stop the Cougar effort. And the Husky defense is rising to the occasion. Swinton has gone backwards on each of the last two plays. Right now, you're looking at a 49-yard field goal attempt. The clock has stopped. Another sideline warning to Washington State. That's their second warning. And on the third, it's a penalty. Ball at the 32, it's third and 16. Washington State's opponent in the Aloha Bowl, Houston, beat Texas Tech 30 to 29 today. They are eight and two and play Rice next week to close out their season. Rosenbaugh will pass. The ball is batted away by Art Malone. Michael Wimberly was the intended receiver, and Malone comes up with a big play, and that will bring on Jason Hansen to attempt a 49 yard. Of, yeah, 50, 49 yards. His long this year is 52. Nope. Oh, yes. I saw Rob Meyer, and I thought Dennis Erickson was going to try to pin him back. He kicked a 52-yarder last week. He has the wind at his back right now. And it's a big field goal if he makes it. From the right half. This will be a 50-yarder. Will it get through? No. It's wide to the left. 
And so the Cougars come up empty. Two minutes, 50 seconds left in the ball game now. Washington's football, eternity. This one is going down to the wire. Again, Washington State with one timeout left. The Huskies with two. Huskies first and 10 from their own 32. Compton and Weathersby, the backs in the I formation. Conklin going upstairs. He'll run. He's dropped, but not until he picks up a first down. Kerry Conklin gaining 12 yards and a first down for the Washington Huskies as they try to move into field goal range for John McCallum, who last week won a game in the last five seconds with a 25-yard field goal against the California Golden Bears as time expires. First and 10, the ball at the 44. Conklin. Weathersby can't find a handle. Vernon Todd was there applying coverage. And the whole Husky bench just dropped their head after Vince Weathersby dropped the football. Kerry Conklin just going out, throwing the simple out route, but that ball's getting wet and it's getting heavy. And that ball just went right through Vince Weathersby's hand, hit him right in the chest. Conklin 12 of 27 for 92 yards in this game starting to rain again on second and ten Compton the lone setback they'll pass Weathersby did he make the catch yes he did fine play by Vince Weathersby for a gain of seven what a catch that was ball at midfield let's see if he caught it Whoa. Oh, I don't know, Sam. Looks, but he had his hands underneath the football. True. I can't really tell. But when those hands are laying on the ground, I think it's a catch. Third and three from midfield. Minute 42 left in the ballgame. Conklin wants to throw. Going for it all, looking for Slater. Incomplete. Vernon Todd right there with Slater, step for step. And the Huskies face a fourth and three. Fourth and three. They've got to go for it. There's no doubt about it. From midfield, this is well out of McCallum's range. <laughs> it would be a 60-yard effort. His <laughs> long of the year, as we mentioned before, effort. is 42. A what? How long? <laughs> 77? 67, 67 yards. 67 yard effort. Play of the ball game right here, sports fans. Fourth and three. High formation. Compton and Weathersby. He'll pass. Incomplete. Aaron Pierce, the intended receiver. <laughs> Bobby O'Neill taunting the Husky sideline, backing up. The official comes up, taps him on the shoulder, and says, hey, get over to your own side. They can throw a penalty flag on that That's now. Exactly that is the right. point of emphasis. And boy, what a costly play that would be, or a costly sophomore-ish act, if you will. Force Washington to use their timeouts. The ball at midfield, first and 10. Cougars with the ball. Huskies with two timeouts remaining, 126 on the clock. Swinton for a first down inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, 39-yard line. It'll be an 11-yard gain for Washington State. Minute 19, the clock stops till the chains are set. Now Tim Rosenbaugh can use 24 seconds and run it off of the clock. Washington State has not won an Apple Cup game since 1985. And that was their last road victory for two years. And then this year they turned it around and went five and one on the road. And that's the reason for their success of the 1988 season. First down, Swinton inside the 35. 
Don James will not call timeout. He's got two of them left. This ball game is over. Oh, he finally called the timeout. With all the coaches, seconds. Excuse me, Keith. All the coaches on the sideline were telling the guys to get back on the line of scrimmage, and that clock continued to tick down because when that ball was the play was over, there was 52 seconds left. Now there's 41 seconds as you see on your screen. So they let 11 seconds tick away. Richie Swinton has carried 30 times for 152 yards in this game. What an effort. His season best is 193 against Arizona State when he came on to replace Steve Broussard. That's now five 100-yard ball games that he's had this year. Washington State leading 32-31 with 41 seconds to play. Here's the critical play of the game. The Cougars block Eric Canton's punt. Sean Landrum came through, recovered by Jay Langwin. And it led to a Cougar touchdown. Swinton. To the 31. He's a yard or two shy of the first down. It'll be a third and two situation. Washington Boy. has used their final timeout with 28 seconds to play. So now Washington State only has to run one more play. Tim Rosenbaugh goes down on one knee. You don't risk a handoff. The clock runs. But the thing is, Washington will get the ball about back. five. No, they let about five seconds run off the clock. It's only third down. They've got two plays left. Washington, no Good timeout. Good but the thing is, they had about five seconds tick off before they called the timeout. What you want to do is go to that official and say, hey, as soon as this play's over, we want timeout. Stop the clock. But they're looking over at the bench and looking for the signal, and then they finally get it. But that extra five seconds could have been a big difference because then that forces Washington State to run another play on fourth down. The Cougars just 28 ticks away from their second eight-win season of the 80s. Don James' team looks like 6-5, and, and there's Dennis Erickson Denny. getting the crowd excited. It'll be his first Apple Cup victory, and he will go over the 500 mark as the Cougar head coach. He's 10-10-1 at this moment. Rosenbaugh goes to one knee. That's it. They, they don't have to run another the one. They don't have to run another play. This ball game is over. And the Cinderella season for Washington State will have one more chapter as they'll go to the 1988 Aloha Bowl to take on the Houston Cougars on Christmas morn. And look at Don James. There's one of the classy individuals in college football or any athletics, Don James. Moving through to congratulate Dennis Erickson. Don whose James. Washington State Cougars have defeated Washington 32 to 31 in the 81st playing of this cross state rivalry. Don James takes his hat off so no one can come out of the crowd and confiscate it. And the Cougar fans are flooding onto the field. There's Tim Rosenbaugh. What a ball game he had. Not so much from a number standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint. As Todd Pickett pointed out during the ball game, he had that offense huddled around him on the sideline when the defense was on the field and just chewing them out, telling them what a job that they had to do. Don James is waiting on the field to congratulate Dennis Erickson. John Husby celebrating. Dennis Erickson, Don James. What a ball game. I think... Washington State is going to the Aloha Bowl with an 8-3 record after their 32-31 victory over Washington uh, Huskies. We'll be back and visit the locker rooms following these words from your local stations on Apple Cup 88. My friends and I agree, nothing comes for free, so each of us works hard in his own way. Fight.
fires and Bobby changing tires and good old Bill behind his disc all day. One thing keeps us going, the dream that keeps on growing. So rock this town and hear the folks all shout. We'll just stay right here and have one more rain here. Cause giving up is not what we're about. The only beer to drink around here is rain here. They're trying to tear down the goalposts here at Martin Stadium, but the security force is right on top of things. After the 82 game, they were able to dismantle the goalpost in the open end of the stadium. Not true on this occasion as they flooded around it to celebrate Washington State's 32 to 31 victory over the Huskies from Washington. Dennis Erickson's first win in this cross-state rivalry and a very special one indeed. We will visit the Cougar locker room. Todd Pickett is standing by and we'll, uh, we'll visit with Dennis Erickson. We'll watch the presentation of the Apple Cup from uh, Governor Booth Gardner. And there go the goalposts, ladies and gentlemen. They're tearing it down. The security guards could not hold it up. So a, a portion of that $650,000 that the Aloha Bowl is presenting to the Cougars for partaking in or participating in their bowl game will go to buy a new upright and I'm sure that Dennis Erickson won't mind a bit given the fact that the fans have supported him well throughout the season the fifth sellout in Martin Stadium history watches Washington State defeat the University of Washington Huskies big day for Richie Swinton 31 carries for 155 yards Jim Rosenbaugh rushed for a touchdown 9 of 21 passing for 148 yards a superb effort given the fact he was injured better part of the fourth quarter with a rib problem Doug Wellsant four carries for 64 yards big day for Aaron Jenkins 17 carries for 93 yards in this game before going down with an injury Bill Thompson the director of operations for the Aloha Bowl is uh, here and will make the official invitation to Washington State in the dressing room and we will be there for that live when uh, it happens Todd Pickett standing by in the Cougar dressing room we'll hear from Dennis Erickson we will also hear from Don James and the Husky locker room following today's game Washington finish or Washington State that has finishes eight and three this year Sam best year since the 1981 Holiday Bowl season Washington finishes at six and five what a great ball game though what a way to come back and that's what Washington State's done all year has come back with that offense those guys have been able to put the points on the board and come back even though the defense is last in the Pac-10 the last half of the season you got to give credit for those victories to the defense because they came up with those big plays you go back to Stanford you go back to UCLA and now you go back to the Washington game well, it's been a tough year for Don James Huskies. Each game going down practically to the final drive. Every game did, really, it's with the exception of the Army game, and, and they were critical games all 11 ball games. So I tell you, this has aged Don James quite a bit. The nine-year bowl string comes to an end for the University of Washington. There will be no postseason game for Don James' team this year, but one has to reflect on the marvelous accomplishment that is a Pacific 10 conference record. The Pac-10 conference record that you talked about was just 27 and 4 non-conference schedule in the Pac-10, yet only three teams are going to bowl games. And you think about who those four losses were to out of conference. Stanford lost to Notre Dame, and then there were three teams that lost to three Big 8 schools. You know what? We're going to uh, pause for just a moment. We're going to come back and visit the locker rooms here at Martin Stadium in Pullman. We're back following these words from your local stations. This is Apple Cup 88. Hi, Gary Lockwood, LJ of the DJ. Every once in a while I hear somebody say, oh yeah, KJR, the kids station. Uh, excuse me, but my daughter listens to somebody named Tiffany. My kids wouldn't be caught dead listening to KJR. Sure, we were the kids station when you were a kid, but you've grown up a lot since then, and so have we. We still play your favorites, classic hits from the 60s and 70s. So you see, we're not the kids station, we're your station. 
Seattle's original 95 KJR. Share the gift of food with the hungry. Donate five items of food for Northwest Harvest, and TCI cable installation is only 99 cents when you order HBO or Cinemax. Or get both HBO and Cinemax for only 11.95 a month. Call your local cable system or 1-800-88-CABLE. HBO brings you the best in television. Cinemax delivers over 125 movies a month. Share great entertainment with your family while you share food with Washington's hungry. Call your local TCI cable system today. An unspeakable crime. Could you show me again how it happened? Mr. Logan, you're under arrest for child molestation. A cop's rage. I didn't do it. You're gonna need an admission of guilt to get this guy. I'll get it. A stupid cop like you steps into my life and I'm it. 21 Jump Street. Sunday night at 7. Sunday, the legend returns. Peggy, I could have talked through anyone, but I chose you. Sunday night at 8.30 on Channel 13. Travel arranged through U.S. Air. Whether you're traveling to Los Angeles for business or pleasure, U.S. Air has a convenient nonstop going your way. U.S. Air, the number one airline at Los Angeles International Airport. Sam, we mentioned the Washington Huskies finished 6-5 and five this year. We're seeing the Cougar dressing room now as they get ready for the Aloha Bowl invitation and the Apple Cup trophy presentation. Huskies go 1-3 and three against bowl teams, so three of their five losses are to bowl clubs this year. Washington State, uh, Army, and uh, UCLA, USC. You know, they, they lose to UCLA, USC. They beat Army, which is bound for the sun. So, so they did lose in a, in a tough manner, a tough schedule this year for Washington. It was a very tough schedule, and, and you look at USC is undefeated 10-0. Uh, UCLA was 9-1 going into today's ballgame. They're now 9-2. Army also 8-2 going into today's ballgame. So as you said, they definitely had a tough schedule. I don't know if that guy's crazier for climbing the goalpost or for being out here without a shirt on. Apple Cup 88 has been ex produced. Uh, the executive producer is uh, Dan Jensen. Today's game was produced by Steve Woodruff, directed by Doug Watts. Technical director, our associate producer today, Barbara Caldwell. Our technical director, Mark Cozzi. John Braff, uh, Bradford provided graphics information for us today. And uh, our thanks to Dick Giovi Ford Mercury for providing us with our sideline camera today, our sideline car. And we are getting ready to go to the Cougar dressing room where we'll be hearing from Dennis Erickson. We'll be hearing from the governor as he does something I'm sure is difficult. He's a Husky grad having to uh, present the Apple Cup to the, the other team in the state. Washington State 32, Washington 31 as they capture Apple Cup 88 and the 81st playing of this cross-state rivalry. Washington still dominating the season or the series between these two clubs. But the Huskies will be staying home this winter. A great disappointment to a group of seniors, I'm sure, who hope to close things out with a record 10th straight bowl appearance. Washington. What happened to the good old days when they made the goalposts out of wood? It was a little bit easier to take them down. Those things are dangerous now. Yeah. Let's go to the Cougar dressing room. Here's Booth Gardner. Hey, Booth Gardner. Hey, he just had a big win. Okay, come on. Congratulations, Dan. Entertaining game for everyone. Go off to Hawaii. Have a great victory and a great time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keith, here comes the other part, the important day for the Cougars. Bill Thompson from the Eagle Aloha Bowl. you like to spend Christmas in paradise? Gotta do this right. On behalf of the Eagle Aloha Bowl, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to extend the invitation to Washington State to play on Christmas Day in Honolulu, Hawaii. if 
excited to say on behalf of Mackie Yanagisawa, the founder of the bowl, myself, you played a great game. We're proud of you. Cougars won today. One point here, one point in Texas. We're going to have a hell of a game in Honolulu. This will be the first time that we'll have Cougars against Cougars. You're playing against the University of Houston. But again now, the ladies here have got ladies for every one of you. Dennis Erickson is here with us now. Thank you. Get dressed. Get dressed. Let's go. Dennis Erickson. Dennis Erickson, you've been from bigger deficits in terms of points, but perhaps never as big a deficit emotionally as you were in the first half. Well, we came out pretty good emotionally, really, Todd, and we uh, turned the ball over and uh, put ourselves in such a bad situation that. Uh, you know, we came in at halftime and we were really a lot of adjustments that we made. We just felt that, you know, if we quit making mistakes that we had a chance to score and get back in the game. And, and uh, Washington played very well. They're a good football team, well coached, and did a great job. We're just very fortunate to win. There's so much talk, especially from the bowl committee, about the exciting offense, but your defense again rose to the occasion. Our defense won a football game. Last three drives, they shut them out. Fourth down, I mean, the defense won a football game in the fourth quarter. Steve Broussard goes out with the pinched nerve. Tim got the bruised ribs. How much did that affect what you were doing offensively down the stretch? Well, a little bit, but Richie ran pretty good. Paul Carr came in there. It affected us a little bit. Right up there, baby. Affected us a little bit. Sunshine in Hawaii will make up for the snowflakes today. Yeah, it will. Thank you. Congratulations. Dennis Erickson, head coach of the Cougars. Let's go back to Keith Shipman and Sam Atkins. The Washington State Cougars bound for the Aloha Bowl to take on the Houston Cougars who defeated Texas Tech 30-29 to today. They are 8-2 and two and close out their season with Rice next weekend in the Astrodome in Houston. Todd Pickett is going to make his way over to the University of Washington dressing room and uh, we'll have a visit with Don James very shortly. Again, the final score, Sam 32-31. Big day from Rich Swinton. What a ball game, and like you said, they have the luxury of having those two running backs that they can switch off, and you really don't experience a lot of drop-off. Drop and when you recap the season for Washington State, they had a couple of ball games where they were blowouts, which gave them the luxury of giving the backup players an opportunity to play to help develop the football program. And the biggest factor of all, I think, in contributing to Washington State's success is the fact that they remained relatively injury free. They didn't they didn't lose Mike Utley, they didn't lose Chris Dyko. They really uh, remained injury free with the exception of uh, Steve Broussard. There are three bowl teams in the Pac-10 this year. Washington State bound for the Aloha. USC will meet Michigan in the Rose Bowl on January 2nd. And UCLA, by virtue of their loss today to USC, will meet Arkansas in the Cotton Bowl. Just three bowl teams, Sam. I think that's a bit of a disappointment given how tough this league was this year. Well, like Mike Lude said on Monday, he said, you know, it'd be great if we had four really lousy teams in our conference because then he said we wouldn't all beat up on each other and then we could all celebrate just a little bit more we are attempting to get to the university of washington locker room to visit with coach james and perhaps some players rich swinton again finishes with 31 carries for 155 yards we'll give you the numbers on the uh, carry conklin now as well 13 of 30 today for 99 yards and uh, it was a, a disappointing afternoon for husky fans but i think they can take satisfaction in it uh, they saw their football team play very well this afternoon in a game which a lot of people wrote them off in. Well, they didn't give Washington a chance, really, because everyone was complaining about Washington's offense, how conservative it is. But, boy, they came out and they played a whale of a ball game offensively. They mixed it up, and they were able to capitalize. They were able to capitalize on the four turnovers in the first half, and that's the biggest key. Not, not so much getting the turnovers, but being able to get points out of those turnovers. Don James is visiting with the press now in the Husky dressing room, and let's see if he has anything uh, he can share with us at this point.
think this is the top offense when you, when you look at the strength of the quarterback and receivers and, and the, the way the line has come along with the offense and with their experience. It's a real solid offensive team. I, I was real pleased with the way our offense played against the defense in the first half. Thirty-two, thirty-one. the final score as the Washington Huskies fall to the Washington State Cougars in Apple Cup 88. Washington State was favored by three and a half points in this game. They end up winning by one, and they finish the season at eight and three. We're back following these words from your local station. This is Apple Cup 88. This is called the Astoria Column. Nice of bombing, you can see there. What did he say? He says our monuments are more glorious than Russia. Recently, some Russian sailors were forced to make port in an Oregon coastal town. They were shown the local attractions. Of particular interest to the Russians was a beer. Brewed only in Oregon. Henry Weinhardt's private reserve. If it's worth a trip to Russia... Yes, the beer is better in Oregon. It's sure worth a trip to the store. Tuesday. Let's put this down. What kind of guys gamble with the boss's money? Do you really hurt them by killing them? I start. Swipe a killer's Cadillac and party on the mob's credit card. That's a gold cop. Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo. I'm the guy they hired to kill you. They're not smart guys. You're the guy they hired to kill me? I'm the guy they hired to kill you! They're wise guys. Tuesday night at 8 on Channel 13. Todd Pickett is standing by in the University of Washington dressing room with the head coach of the Huskies, Don James. Thank you, Keith Husky. Coach Don James is here uh, answering questions of reporters. Coach, uh, again, has to be frustrating after getting the lead to have it slip away, have the Cougars come back, and being frustrating, not able to put more points on the board as well. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> I would like to say yes. You're right. <laughs> you mentioned just a moment ago that you couldn't have played the run any better than you played it today. No, I said we have to play it a whole lot better than we've played it this year. We've, we've not, uh, we're at the bottom of the league, a defense against the run and at the top against the pass, but, uh, and you have to play pass defense in this league, but, you know, you can't, you can't give up running yards like we did this year. What went right, what went wrong today? Well, everything broke for us the first half. We got, a, we got four turnovers, you know, we just, every time you looked up, we were having a, you know, getting a good break. And, uh, and, and it, with the exception of one time, we, we were able to get points on the board. Uh, and I, you know, we, we missed a field goal, and that was very critical. You could just see it. Uh, the uh, the second half, you know, after that, I think they settled down and they stopped turning the ball over. We we did get another gigantic break on a on a punt. Been running with it. They got a they got a break that they deserved because they they blocked the punt. And that's you know it was something they did better than rushing. We did protecting. I think one thing you'd agree with Coach Dennis Erickson, a statement he made a couple minutes ago, his defensive unit really won the game for them today. Well, I, I think so when you figure, uh, you know, that they had four turnovers in the first half and they, they held us. You know, they, you know, they, they were under the gun and they, you know, come back second half and just totally shut us down. Thank you very much for the time, Coach James. Keith Shipman, back to you and Sam Atkins. And Todd Pickett, our thanks to you for a nice job on the sideline and in the dressing rooms today. We'd like to... Uh, Thank all of those along the lines that have assisted us uh, this year, bringing you uh, Cougar football and Husky football, 88, now the Apple Cup game. And to Sam Atkins, we wish you and uh, Bill Swartz and Bob Rondo at Como the best of luck as you cover the Huskies in the future. Thank you, Keith, and it's been a pleasure working with you for the last five years. Apple Cup 88 is history. Washington State defeats Washington 32-31. to 31. Apple Cup 88 is a presentation of Kelly Television. For Sam Atkins and Todd Pickett, I'm Keith Chipman. Enjoy your holiday season. Apple Cup 88 was brought to you by Fred Meyer. You'll find it at Freddy's. By Rainier Beer. The only beer to drink around here is Rainier. And by Pemco. We honor excellence.